Yo, yo, this isn't, you know, you we're drink. not in school. Yo. We're having a few beers. I mean, technically, podcast. I don't even want to show that men's are drinking Bud Light. Well, yo, shout yeah, out yeah. Bud Light. Shout, shout out, Bud, out Bud, Light. Bud Light. Are we embarrassed okay, about yeah. the Bud Light? Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're still trying to get that deal with Diddy at Ciroc, so we can't really be seen with other stuff. Yeah, true. But we'll rock with the Bud Light today, yo. Diddy knows. He's not always sipping on Ciroc. True. All right, so what is this, episode four? Episode episode four of the Lost and Talks podcast, the most lit podcast in the east eastern side of Scarborough. Yeah, yeah. Most lit podcast in the east. E- side of Scarborough. Side of Scarborough. Side of Scarborough. <laughs> the most eastern right. side of Scarborough. Sorry, I didn't want to get too specific. Yeah, yeah we should get more, S- more specific. I'm sorry. No, mans are going to find us if they really want to find us. Like, we still take buses and whatnot. That's, so. that's true. That's I'm not true. really in the like the that's Uber. True. If, you, if you camp out at Kennedy Station long enough, you might. Find yeah. You, me. Okay. Chill. I don't need man's knowing <laughs> <laughs> exactly where to pull up yeah. all the time. That's not. Know? That's for me, not these two. But that's pretty wild, still. Oh shit. That's cool. You know, I just oh, the man's while are, this is happening, you, I you guys are calling on my. Never mind. <laughs> what? 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 Never mind. On Instagram, Instagram Live. Oh, yeah. I'm just not gonna go there. Anyways, so this is episode four of the Lost and Talks podcast. Uh, I am. We should introduce ourselves every time. Like we all, yeah, might as well. I'm uh, Ian McGilvery. I do you do like uh, sorry? Do you do like little tags on the bottom? Like, yeah. Are you gonna? All right. All right. We're talking to Zach, by the way. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, I'm Ian McGilvery. I run operations at Lost Nostalgia. I'm a director and a photographer. Yeah, right. Kevin Ramroop, musician, writer, music mentor for Wave Art Collective out of the Malvern Library. Um, Tropic just came out and R&B 2 just came out and the Passive video just came out. I am uh, Jamal B. Shooter Cutter Boss. Mm. You already know what it is. Shooter Cutter Boss Lynn. (laughs) 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 Um, And uh, yeah, that's more of a more of a cutter these days. Not much of a shooter. Uh, Once in a while. Stressed cutter. Mm, Not stressed. We're getting well... I like to well. <laughs> make sure the stress is low. It's just I don't like to deal with a lot of fuckery. Not not in a not that he stresses, just elements that are stressing. Us. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's just clients and yeah. whatnot. Yeah, couple clients, um, but it's all good. That's that's how the industry goes, right? Try not to bang that too much, eh? I'm sorry. I know you because I know true. you. And you're not gonna think about this, so I'm just gonna say it. Try not to bang that. You know, got this it. This is why I have my soft wooden table. That's true. It's kind of tricky. I have to actually have to try. Or put it. Oh no. <laughs> I was gonna say put it on the book, but whatever. anyways. Um, so we could talk about grants first. Might as well get sure. into it. We kind of talked could. about that last time. Low key, I'm gonna hop in quick just because you missed the perfect segue. Go right ahead. Jamal is better at segues. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into the client shit first. Okay, that is true. That was a good segue. I just didn't know if you guys. You just were weren't ready. murdering it like that. I, just I was hoping I could ready. trust you with the moment, and you let no, it go. No, I, I saw the moment, and somehow I, you I need took to a hop back, on those moments. I took a back step. See not exactly. gonna lie, I took. Now a Ian, I mean, sorry. Now Zach has to carry your oh, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, so like, yes, like we've been dealing with clients, and of course, that's how the industry goes. You deal with clients. Some clients are great. Other clients, and it's not always the client's fault. It's kind of just goes both ways for sure deal with some clients a little that are a little trickier to work with, you know, that have a, a lot more to say or, you know, less to say, which is there's not a lot of always, shit clients out here. There's, there's, yeah. I mean, like a lot of pressures put on like, you know, the people who the creators of projects like music videos and stuff like that. And then I feel like sometimes there's not enough responsibility on the client side. And then we're sometimes we have to pick up the slack and we have to figure out things for people who, don't actually know what they're doing mm. or don't have any real idea like what they want yeah right i mean well we- i think the biggest the biggest uh what would you say the biggest disconnect between the client and the company in terms of music video and musician is the fact that yeah people are giving you five hundred thousand dollars two thousand dollars mm. which obviously from one person it's, it's a lot of money but when you're when you're Thinking about yourself being a musician, being somebody who wants to make music videos, you have to realize that that's not a lot of money. And even you think that, you know, if you were to give, you hand somebody a thousand dollars, that gives you endless reign in terms of your vision of what you think your music video should look like. But really, that's like the basic, you know, 
it's still basic. Yeah, you're yeah. not getting like, much for you, so, yeah. yeah. So you have to like really lower your expectations. You, I know it's a thousand dollars. Like, like we, we I, all know what I understand that we're all broke too. We know a thousand dollars is a lot of exactly. money. Exactly, I understand a thousand dollars out of your pocket is like shit. You might have had to save up for three months. Then mm-hmm. I don't know what your current situation is. Yeah, you had, paying you bills. You got exactly. a kid. Some some of you guys got it. kids and, and shit. like yeah. to spend. You think oh that's a lot of money coming from. But in the in the reality of production, that's nothing. Or that's that's the bare minimum, right? And, that, and you're paying, <laughs> I mean, and it depends on who you're working with. When you're working with us, for example, I mean, there's a couple, we, there's multiple hands in the project, right? So right away that money is being split, right? And then of course we approach. No, video. but then you're also not, you guys aren't even getting paid for no, videos I mean, that are like I'm going to tell everyone right now on the podcast, if the video is a thousand or under, we're not getting paid. Yeah, uh, yeah there's and no money if going the into the pockets. Yeah. If the video is $3,000, we're getting paid low. Mm. <laughs> like do exactly. you understand like we're not getting paid decent until it's like five thousand or more yeah, yeah. and some yeah, again, like, exactly and sometimes we might even just if we get a good budget we might just take the l yeah, yeah. just because we care more about the piece yeah then we care about putting money in our yeah. pockets yeah. That, and we, we take full responsibility of that we're not like complaining that oh i'm not making enough money we've been doing that for two years long enough we're not complaining that's yeah. not what we're talking about here we're talking about more like just that when you give a thousand dollars, just rem- just remind yourself that that is a drop in a bucket for a budget, and just your expectations should be lowered right away. And men's aren't just right. taking the money and running away with it. We're, and that's also true. We're actually yeah. not taking the money. You're not getting yeah. finessed when. Because yeah, <laughs> in terms of how budgets work, it's like maximum ten to fifteen percent that the artist fee might take that the the the, the client yeah. or the company might take from it. So yeah, and ten percent. Imagine of, if you're given a thousand dollars. It, it max these guys are taking a hundred bucks and then splitting that four ways. These guys are gonna get twenty five dollars from that. 12, no 000. point. No yeah. point in putting that. In we don't even bother because yeah. it's, you might it's, as well put that hundred dollars towards company. Whatever. We put it back yeah. into the company. We buy yeah. equipment. That's why we were even able to start the podcast. And then for under a thousand dollars, it's probably just going towards the video because mans are cutting costs in some other way exactly. anyway. So have to pay a, yeah. a cameraman. Yeah. Sometimes you have to pay yeah. for a location. Yeah. Oh, you want a cool car, fam? That costs money. Yeah. Oh, you want this baddie? Oh, she costs money. Unless exactly. you know something. Unless you're, you have a really good connection with her and you know her personally. Then you can get models for lower cheap, but like you're gonna have to know them. And even models I know like don't won't work for free. I mean, they want a little bit. These girls are collecting their bags. I these get days. it. Like you, you got to think of it this way, bro. Like when you're getting these models that are sh- like look like strippers or are basically strippers. If you try to call them out on a Friday night for a video and they're getting paid a thousand dollars at the strip club, they're not pulling up your video for a hundred bucks. Exactly. You get it unless they love you or they think you're blowing up next week. Exactly. Like you know what I mean? Like that's just the reality. <laughs> also a big like, thing with uh this company to client relations is communication. Yeah. Um communication is key in every single relationship. If there's anything you take away from this podcast ever, is just let it be that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Anything, any relationship you have in life, whether that be with a company, mm-hmm. your best friend, your fucking cat or dog, communication is key. <laughs> yeah. Um, because a lot of the time we'll have clients that don't speak up when it's time to speak up, but they want to speak up after. When the video is done and shot or when we're deep into an edit, they say, oh, can we do this? Can we add this? Oh, can we have another shoot day? Can we do this? Oh, uh, can we get some VFX? This is not stuff that we have talked about clearly. Yeah. Um, and before. I get it. Yeah, you can, you can understand too. Like, you don't really know what the video is going to look like until you start to see it actually being put together and stuff. Yeah. You know, sometimes the treat, most times the treatment isn't going to be give you that full picture, but no. you have to understand that going into it, that that's what's going to happen. Like, you're just not going to know what it's going to look like. So you have to. Lower your expectations when you see that first cut, no matter what. Not lower your expectations, but don't bring any expectations to it because because it, it could be... It's going to look like the treatment, but it's not going to look exactly, exactly like, like it. Can't. Yeah. Like, it's very rare. And on a budget of a 1000 or less, yeah. that, that is very much the case. And yeah. uh, let's be real. Mans are lucky they're even getting treatments for music videos. That's, that that's actually true, less, by the yeah. way. We shouldn't even really be sending a treatment. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you guys knew this, but like, me, Zach Jamal... It'll take us minimum eight hours to make a fucking treatment. Yeah. Minimum eight hours, fam. Sometimes more. Sometimes we'll spend twenty hours on a goddamn treatment if the the video is complex. That's time. <laughs> like, like yeah. you understand? Like, I should be getting paid five hundred dollars just to make a goddamn treatment. Mm-hmm. But we get it, like, because we don't need to once we get that deposit. But we do it anyways because that's part of the communication. 
We're trying to like give you a treatment. And that's part of your ideals as a company too. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of how we roll. That's again how we set ourselves apart from a lot of people. A treatment is a is like it's kind of what you're paying for, even though you're not paying for it. That is what you get when you exactly. It's like that's a freebie that you're getting in this. Yeah, yeah. Like that's like added value to our service, Mm -hmm. and a treatment is is very much in your favor because we would like to show you what it's going to look like roughly because it's not going to be ideal. But roughly what it's going to look like, it's a lot better than us saying, oh, we're going to shoot at this or, or whatever in this club or whatever. And that's it. And we have a bunch of models. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, you snapped. <laughs> we might as well say it now because we're getting into the bleeps now. So yeah, we're already we're getting into the bleeps. So, yeah. Um, but, but yeah, no, but I get what cool. you're saying. And also, again, when it comes to communication, just the words that you are using since we're talking about, and Zach's going to beat this out the um, <laughs> like, <laughs> like in a situation where we are talking to a client about the music video and they tell us certain things that they do want, but they don't understand what they're saying to us. They don't understand that the words that they are telling us don't mean the same thing because yeah. Yeah. we're going to take it literally because we understand what the term means. Yeah. For example, I don't know, like what, like... Well, cinematic, cinematic is, a, is a word. <laughs> is a great word. Yeah, to, yeah. yeah. they use that yeah. word a lot. We want something. Yeah, cinematic. a lot of clients use cinematic. Mm-hmm. I'd say from a yeah from a filmmaker's perspective, I'm not a, like as someone who works with filmmakers as a musician. The way that I understand cinematic now means that you're putting together a production that looks like a movie, and that's what we we do. We want to tell stories. Cinematic doesn't mean the quality of the film itself. It means the the, the the flow of the actual yeah, the flow content of you know? the content yeah. yeah if we're really talking about what cinematic is even if you will and we're gonna make it mad simple it's the black bars yeah Re- yeah but that's <laughs> like no that's, that's see that's, that's what just, that's what we think that's people the mean. bottom and that's what people mean a yeah, lot of the bare time. minimum cinematic but if you were yeah. to tell a production company what what cinematic means it cinematic is like oh we're making a movie yeah we're making a real movie yeah. oh, okay so this is we're gonna need lighting we're gonna need to do this we're gonna mm-hmm. need to do that. You know what I mean? We're going to be shooting on different lenses. And we're gonna, yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's, it's not a... If you want that from your music video, you have to understand what you're saying when you say you want it cinematic. Mm-hmm. Because cinematic, a cinematic music video is like, you know, like a short film, like a Kendrick Lamar video, or you know what I mean? Yeah. Like a short film, like exactly. maybe even some dialogue and stuff exactly. too. Uh, even something I was dealing with recently is I had a client that wanted uh, trailers a uh, music video trailer, basically. Mm. Right. Um, but they kept calling it a fucking promo. Mm. Right? And I'm like, I was kind of confused. Like, I kind of got what they wanted. But at the same time, at, at first, I was like, a promo? Like, what Like what do you mean? Yeah. And as it, like, what do you mean you need a promo? Yeah. You need promotion. And then he, as he, tra- he started to explain it a bit more, I, st- mm. I was like, oh, you just want a fucking music video trailer. You just want a little clip for your music video. Mm. Yeah. To, mm-hmm. If you want... Like, add onto Instagram as an ad, or yeah, whatever, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah. But yeah, I get it. Like with the budget we work at, it's, you know, you're gonna get clients that aren't seasoned in this world. Yet. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. At the end of the day, right? So that is something we. Just I mean, have hopefully, to work resources with. like this can help. This is what we want to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This podcast, is why we're having we're these conversations. Like, yeah. Help because I know people. You know, they yeah. get they get hung up with money. So we're talking in real dollars here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? No one likes to talk about money. Yeah. We're talking about it right now. Like, yeah. like fam. I'm sorry, but the thousand dollar video is not a lot of money. Exactly. And that's but we you have work to get with that out it of the way because a, we love a, yeah. doing it. Exactly. As an up and coming musician, you have to get that out of the way right now. Like, just know that under a thousand dollars, it's not. It's okay. not. Okay. And exactly. like, because like label videos are starting at like forty k and up. Just saying, late. That's the a small label video is forty k. Yeah, like a small one, like a start, like a, the guy just got signed six months ago. First music video under the label. Yeah, forty k. Okay, Killy's last video forty k. Let's just say that right now because I have inside information on oh, on these on these budgets. Oh, just shit. saying, but you know what so I mean. In the industry, and then you get up to Drake or Post Malone where you're getting close to a million, right? So that's exactly. kind of the range there. Right, so a thousand is we uh we saw a video. we saw a trash ass, uh twenty one savage music video. Oh, are we going into that? <laughs> we saw a trash ass twenty one thousand twenty one thousand <laughs> twenty one savage uh, music video that looks like it could have been shot for a thousand dollars or less. Or, you know, what? let's not say thousand dollars. It looked like again. I I think to I told be, you guys to like be fair, three to five k. Yeah, it could have been on the low end five k max twenty k. Yeah, and then right? I was only Sorry. saying that because yeah. of the location and the models. Because yeah. they only used one location, and 
and yeah, the video itself. Is they used garbage. one location but faked three locations. Yeah, they faked it. It's so they made like, they made like the basement look like it was a club. Yeah, they shot in this like nice mansion in the hills. And they used like this random hallway in the house to make it look like it was the the hallway of the club that the girl was going yeah. to the washroom in. Yeah. Um, but either way, like when we found out the budget behind that, that budget was we don't have to say the actual budget number, but it was in the hundreds of thousands, mm. the high hundreds of thousands, and that shit looked like something that anybody could have shot. You know yeah, what I mean? With like ten k or less. So yeah, it's just yeah. it's just one of those things uh, when it comes to exactly. clients and and working with a company or even just re- regular videographers, shooters that are out there. Communication is. Like it always needs to be solid. Like yeah. personally, what I like to do is I try to be as upfront as possible with everything that I'm doing, just so that no man could ever say, "Yo, you never told me this." Yeah, you know what I mean. It's because you're not hiding anything anyway. So I try what? to I try yeah. to over communicate. Yeah, all the time so that yeah, yeah, yeah. like nobody, nobody could ever knows. say, "Yo, you didn't give me this cut," or "You didn't do this," "You didn't do this," "You didn't do that." Yeah, you're out here sending like paragraphs of emails exactly daily with updates exactly daily with updates, and then you might get the odd reply every seven days. Exactly. <laughs> like, are you you know what I mean? Complain about communication. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Communication is that, also you know I mean? if if we're talking through emails, if you tell me that you know what I mean, you want to see a cut this time, or you need the video by this date, that. When I send you the new cuts to see if they're good enough for you, if you can approve them, that means you got to reply to my email. Because if you don't reply, then that means I'm not making any more changes yep. until I see what you have to say. Because I'm not going to waste any more of my time. We're on this pretty shit. nice with revisions too. I mean, we don't really put revision limits. We should. We should. We'll have that conversation <laughs> later. He's the editor, so he's feeling <laughs> the full like wave of doing constant revisions. Yeah, I don't so maybe like. He's I don't, the one that would speak up for that. I don't like <laughs> I don't like doing anything that's more than like three to four revisions. But the reality revisions. is, if the communication is better, then there would be less revisions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. A lot you know of the time, I mean? that's and, what it comes down you, to. You gotta think of us on the other end, and if you have a bunch of things you want to change, say it all in at once. Don't yeah. say I want this one shot change. He re-exports it. It takes him like four hours to do it. Send a new thing. Okay, I want this shot changed now too. Exactly. We've experienced this with not just music video clients, like corporate clients are. Infamous clients, right? Qu- clients in general, but corporate <laughs> yeah. clients are infamous for doing that. Kind yeah, of stuff, exactly. They always want little changes for nothing. Yeah, like, and it's usually like titles or music. Mm-hmm. Usually, it's never the content. It's always titles or music because they, you know, they have these branding. They're, they're all caught up on branding when they don't actually know how to brand. Exactly. <laughs> like, like some clients, no, I, mean, I can't say all, but yeah. Yeah. Anything else you want to say? This is like a huge rant. We sound like we can again. I feel like this is I another mean, thing we should. We should just always have a guest. Yeah, it's a positive rant though. Like we're like even to... if we even if we had like a guest that was an artist, so we could see their perspective. Yeah, I mean, having Kevin on is really good because we've shot how many videos for him, and he's an artist. But that's the thing, man. Who pays for Kevin videos. doesn't count. He's blessed. You Does know what I mean? Count? Like he's just new from the beginning. Yeah, Kevin. Yeah, that's yeah the and that's the yeah. thing. Like, I mean, I grew up. Yeah, with no learning. At, like as you guys have been learning, so that's why it's a yeah, little yeah, different. Exactly. Yeah. But so you're Kevin like. Knows. You're... But also, even if even if we weren't, I think. I'd be the type of artist who would just have a little bit more sense and like talking to people and exactly. understanding what they do because there's things that, you know, obviously other artists don't know what the the little ins and outs of musicians. So it's up to you as whatever you're experiencing, it's up to you to communicate to that person what you actually bring to the table, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, because if you're not saying what you're doing, then or yeah. what you want, then then you're not going to get it at exactly. a certain point. Exactly. Right? And, and there's like with video, the process, you can't just be deep into an edit and say, I want this, this, and this, when it doesn't exist. Yeah, exactly. Or you, it's just too much of an inconvenience to try and edit again. Yeah. There's steps to it, you know what exactly. I mean? So it's hard. Like, you have to, we have to set the expectations about everything, from the way you're dressed, to the lighting, to, to who's on camera, how we're editing the damn thing, all from as early as possible. So, so smooth that to the end. The way, yeah. Yeah. You know what exactly. I mean? And that's partly what the treatment is. Right. So, but again, clients are on set with me when we shoot. So that's another time to speak up. (laughs) Yeah. So, you know, speak up when you speak up is a, again, that's something that really affects both sides, the clients and the companies that you are working for or working with. Um, Again, it's just communication. Like, Mm -hmm. and again, you have to, you have to recognize that, yes, we're working on your project your project is not the only project that we're working on. That's also true. Um, we I'm don't not, do this full time. For me, 
I'm not sitting at my computer waiting for your emails. We don't do this. I want to also say <laughs> we don't do this full time. We have jobs. Exactly. We don't do this 50 hours a week. So there's days where we actually just can't sit down and start editing. Mm. Or, exactly. You know what I mean? That's just the reality. You want to know why? Because the thousand dollar budgets are not paying the bills. Yeah. And because we're not there that's yet. That's what you're getting. That's what we're getting a lot of the time. So. Because mans don't have money. And, and that's we get us, it. We get it. That's not us complaining that we're getting five thousand uh, dollar budgets. I get that's where we are right now in our career. We're gonna move up. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, that's what we're striving to be. Yeah. Right. And we hope anyone who is paying for a thousand dollar budget now is gonna move up too. And hit us up with a 40K in a few years. Yeah. I hope. <laughs> when mans are signed. Or Dope. if you're, you're exactly. doing great, you're doing great because you're independent. You know, you're doing yeah. shows. So now you can afford that, that too. something fancy. Then yeah. congrats. Let's get it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think there's a, there's like an idea for musicians that, you know, because as, like, as a musician, we finesse how much money in terms of saving, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars because yeah. I make my own music in my basement. Right. Yeah. But with videos, you just can't. There's no finessing. Yeah, that's, that's equivalent to, to what you can do with music, right? Exactly. Like with with videos, you have to put a certain amount of money in. You could put together a music. You know, you always hear about these musicians. It's like, yeah, I made this in my bedroom. You can't do that with music videos. You can't yeah. just say, yeah, I made this. Yeah, yeah. There are the the little quirky videos that people come out with and stuff. But that's a very specific thing. Mm-hmm. When you want to put together a music video and you yeah. hire a company, yeah, there's going to be a certain amount of money that you have to put together, and there you is. can't finesse things you know like no because first of all they don't know behind the scenes how much you guys are actually finessing just by pulling favors and asking people to yeah, come there's in there's a lot stuff. we don't tell you yeah. that we're doing there's a lot we're not telling you that the guy who's shooting it next to you is not getting paid mm-hmm. and, and he's he, somebody who does and get, he bought and he's it somebody yeah. that's getting paid yeah and he's somebody who's getting paid yeah. he's somebody who uh worked on a drake music video yeah. three months ago yeah you know even like, just like <laughs> calling out for pas like, every time you guys do a shoot like these people who are coming on literally just to do nothing, like get nothing. Just to hang out. Yeah. Just to hang out. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? People like, could be doing other shit in their day other than being on your music video. Mm-hmm. And they liked, we liked your song enough to work on it too. Yeah. That's exactly. also like, we're keep doing that in mind. Like, we like exactly. your music. Like, we're, we're working with you because we, like we like your music. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, we wouldn't be hustling like that if we hated the song. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> like, I, think, I think that's what people seem to get. Like, everybody's hustling. You know what I mean? We're yeah. all. Just because, you know, you're working with a company and you, you feel like we're more established or this and that, it doesn't mean shit. Like, we're grinding just like you. We might be grinding harder than you. Yeah. But we're still grinding just like you. We're still here trying to figure shit out every day, right? Yeah. Um, and just like you are trying to finesse your shit, we're trying to finesse everything. And when we are here trying to work with you, we're doing everything that we can in our power to make sure that the final product comes out and it's hard. Like, yeah. Mm. think about it people have been doing music videos for how long now like there's no secret formula to get a hundred and fifty thousand dollar budget looking video out of a thousand dollars you can pay all the money we've gotten ten thousand dollar looking fifty thousand dollar looking videos out of the thousand dollars we spent but like you can only go so far yeah that's the extent that we've done and we busted our ass doing that too days and days you could really go so far (laughs) you know and think about it like we're your we do your video and then we do another one a few weeks from now Mm -hmm. can't just keep stretching the same resources over and over again hey can you work on this video for free hey can you work we have people who who get a call from us every three weeks hey can you work on this video for free exactly (laughs) you know what i mean like shit and we look like the assholes asking all these people to do that exactly so there's only so much we could do on that on that i'm happy that we have the people that we have because they kind of get it you know what i mean yeah and And a lot of them are just down for the cause like they're just like you know yeah let's do it because they they think the pieces are gonna be cool and these are the people we're gonna call when we have a like a budget Mm -hmm. yeah from a label these are the same people yeah these are the first people hitting on artists because realistically norris is getting big budgets unless they're signed or they are very successful independently yeah which is rare which is rare. Most most artists are gonna need the label mm-hmm. <laughs> backing them up, right? So exactly, if you want to yeah. drop money on a video, yeah, right. So, and then any big big artist will probably just get their friend to do it really cheap, anyways. All right, something I wanted to get into quick, probably not quick, but we'll see. Basically, just kind of going off of our last subject there with the clients and whatever, and. It's kind of touching on their expectations for their videos and what they're supposed to look like. Have you noticed, because I personally have noticed, like I've just noticed the the change in people's expectations for music videos as of recent, but I've kind of noticed like the different waves that people are on. Mm. So right now we're on the Cole Bennett wave. (laughs) Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So everybody... 
needs to have a music video with VFX or some yeah. wild shit going and on. And it's not even necessarily like they're done well. VHS. It's just like just exactly. VFX Films, vomit. Looking film, like it was, film yeah. looks. Okay, yeah. that's another one. Yeah. So it's the... The that's specifically what we're talking about mm-hmm. for this wave. Oh, yeah. that's oh, just effects in general? Well, this wave right now. Yeah. You got the Not, Cole Bennett. At the moment, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I, And this is what I was, yeah. I was just trying to talk about because it's, it's kind of funny because if you start actually looking at the little waves, like I feel like I started taking it in the waves. I mean, there's Matic over here. Yeah. <laughs> I started taking it in the waves when, personally for me, when I was older and I could start digesting this information when uh, Chief Keef I Don't Like came out. That's when everybody had to have a Chirac video. Mm. You know yeah, what I mean? Like a like a a man holding your camera yeah. and knocking it back and forth. He's and like, <laughs> I don't know how to describe. It. Honestly, it's quite impressive how they do it. Yeah, it's like a, how it's they do very that impressive handheld. Video. They, they no rig. They just hold the camera raw with their mm-hmm. hands, and they just they're able to move to the to the beat. Mm-hmm. It's done really well, actually, in a, like a like a bat like a gorilla style way. Yeah, it's like. Try not to use the word ghetto. I'm sorry. It's you just, already did. Yeah. And they're all after Basis. us. <laughs> <laughs> they're all after us. Now. But basically, that's all I wanted to touch on. Like, yeah, yeah. I just find it very interesting, or even if you guys wanted to speak on it as well, like, just like people's expectations with what's going on now. So people are looking at other videos and trying to hold their videos up to that standard. And if your video doesn't have you split up into three different people or your eyes doing this and that, you fucking zooming through an eye or whatever. Well, that's what that is. <laughs> that's what it was. So we're hearing these vibrations and it's, and it's, uh, that's what type of instrument is that? With the glasses? No, because now it's gone. Yo, what kind of instrument is that? Like actually a mandolin. Mandolin. There you go. Kevin has a mandolin. Kevin has multiple string instruments. Whatever. But, but back yeah. to what the fuck I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you uh, do you guys notice that as well? Yeah, I I think it comes down to like I don't know, like people want to be like everyone else. <laughs> you know what I mean? People just want to be like okay, if 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 putting in a, a like mind you fake Super Eight. By the way, we use real Super Eight inserts. Uh, if you watch past it, it's all real Super Eight. By the way, watch not, past it. Not fake Super Eight. But anyways, it's fine. Whatever. If you shoot fake Super Eight, it's fine. I've seen big budget videos do it. But anyways, like I don't know. Everyone wants to just be on the same kind of wave as everyone else. And why don't you just try to be different? Like exactly because that is nothing that bothers me. That's why the Chief Keef I don't like video got popular. Yeah. It was different. It was That's different. why Cole Bennett is at the place that he is now. So, because he was dropping videos that were completely different. Exactly. The videos that, was, that you're trying to emulate years seven became years ago became popular because they were different. So why are you trying to be the same videos that have already blown up? Mm-hmm. Exactly. That doesn't make sense. For example, yeah, the VHS right? effect that was done what Party Next Door is the vid- recognized mm-hmm. what, six years ago. Yeah. Uh, now, you know I, I mean? just had a thought though. That could be related to music, like the way artist sound too yes fact. like right. the same t- fact. the same type way they auto-tune their voice the mm-hmm. type of beats they're rapping over mm-hmm. everyone wants to rap over like a like a who's the top producers right now i'm sorry i'm blanking out like whatever Metro, like the, that type beat you know what i mean mustard. like they want to be like that all sound kind of that same type of trap right now pierre. as of 2019 right pierre born born yeah yeah, yeah pierre born and playboy cardi are Play- probably like the most influential in it's this true. area this area this era right now at the moment okay um, as far as okay, True. just music, the bounce, and the True. way it's not like Migos anymore, not really. It used like, to be, we can get into it's that. More too. Melodic, it's think. more melodic, yeah. though. We're in yeah. a more melodic time, yeah. I, I mean, guess you are right, though. Then, if I look at it like that, it's more about the trends that all, everybody's like kind of focusing on. Music like that, too, but because like, like, I feel like even the video man's like that, too. Like, the video man's like, oh, shit, like, I, I like this, I like the way I'm Lone sorry. Wolf is doing his thing, so I want to do stuff like Lone Wolf. Mm. Like, even I've done that as well. Like, for our keys video, I want to yeah, do yeah. more stuff like. Lone Wolf, but it wasn't because, like, it wasn't because I was trying to copy him. It's because I just wanted to figure out how he did it. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. I would, for me, it was more about like I wonder what the process is for him. So like, might as well try it out. That's true. you know what I mean. That's true. Yeah, we were. That was part of it, experimenting. Mm-hmm. We wanted to try it out. Like we wanted to be like, all right, we see all these effects like Cole Bennett and Lone Wolf. So let's try and make one video like that. And we've only really done one or two. Yeah, we've only and done if one you or two. See videos. any more from us? Is that the client's request? Yeah, right. Because we aren't a very VFX and shit like that. We're, we're not a VFX company. We're not trying to do all that stuff. You know what I mean? We like, like nice clean cuts. You know what I mean? Something yeah. that looks cinematic. 
And, that, and that's because <laughs> we haven't really taken the time to learn the VFX because we don't really care for it that much. Like, he's Jamal's like, been learning now because he's kind of forced to. Yeah, I'm forced <laughs> into having to do this shit. So, I have so to, he's so kind of learned. Ask for it. Yeah, people ask for it. So he it's kind of annoying because I'm like, so. your cut is already good. Like, yeah. this shit's fucking fire already, yeah. but you want me yeah. to. Yeah. I'm going to throw all these overlays on it that yeah. are like, A, we didn't even shoot for them to be there. Because I think it's kind of weird. It's like, how do you like write a treatment with like VFX like that? Like, how do you plan for that? I'd have to ask Cole Bennett because the way he does it is really great. I feel like, I feel like, but with somebody like Cole Bennett or Lone Wolf, I feel like they already kind of know. I was gonna say Cole Bennett's actually gotten away from those effects. And he, yes, I was about to yeah, say. Yeah, she as has. Well. Like, if you look at his work in the last year, he's kind of slowing down on the effects. It's more. It's, it's not even that. He's. He's more focused because before I feel like he was just trying a bunch of stuff. Yeah. But now he understands it. So he's like, okay, That's this is how true. I'm going to use it. That's very true. Instead. Part of that might be because he might have started writing treatments over the last few years. Possibly. He might. I, I doubt he started writing treatments. He probably just, like, hey, let's shoot a video. And then he, in After Effects, he's just, that's where the magic happens. Fucking with shit, yeah. Now he probably writes treatments, which I, I know he does because he said it in videos. So... I just want to see more. Started. I want to see more variety out there from the people that are, you know, really doing it. I feel like some of the people that we have here in the city that are really popular have. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say this. I feel like Toronto, out of every city in the world, maybe not. Maybe not in the Spanish places like the Latin community because they yeah. come up with some fire videos. Yo, um, but like, yeah. I feel like Toronto. I feel like we are some. Of, we have some of the best shooters like in the world because um, the quality of videos that all of us are putting out are pretty good. Like the top guys, yeah, we put out some really good quality videos. They yeah. might not be like my favorite, or I'm, and it's not my favorite because I understand what you did to make this video. But yeah. if I were just to consume this as a regular viewer. We put up some quality stuff from like, and we're talking about all ranges from like hood shooters, like under a thousand dollar budget to there's a lot of and the production houses that are here. Yeah, because Americans come here to shoot a to lot work with shit. Canadian directors, right? Exactly. They do that a lot, actually, more, and it's probably cheaper to shoot here. But <laughs> exactly, it is cheaper to shoot here. And even the exchange rate, but even going back to the yeah. just the like the topic itself is like when once King of the Fall came out, that changed the whole city. <laughs> Everybody needed to do a music video that was like in slow mo. That slow mo with walking like walking around with neo girls, noir, like, cute white girls just standing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and that was made by Kid Studios. Yeah, which is and, uh, and they're one of the tops. They're the one of the tops. <laughs> who started from? Well, you know what? They never. We don't know their early work. It's really just Kid and King of the Fall, and from there. Yeah, as far as I know, they're yeah, but. Yeah, they are. Those guys are inspiration to a lot of us here. Yeah, and I think most shooters in the city. But uh, that is true. King of the Fall kind of started you know I mean? that whole Queen Street EXO, whatever you want to call it. That dark, like, like the. Like we already had the sound, what, but then Kid it? came with the like, the look. Toronto you know looking I mean? like Gotham City. Yeah, like the whole like people. <laughs> some people in Toronto call Toronto like Gotham, yeah. and it's mainly because of that look that Kid. And the sound that we were all able to create at the time, yeah. um, around that time that it was all popping up. So, yeah, I feel like it's just very interesting just to see the type of trends that are going on with people. Yeah. It kind of bothers me because I'm just like, damn, like... I really hope this whole, like, vintage film era... I know and that's what we do. What we do well, is- that's what we do because we actually do it. Yeah, we're not doing it because <laughs> it's a trend, like... And we're not... But we also don't fake it, like... They're adding, like, fake... We're shooting actual film. They aren't. Fake, like... Super 8 overlays. Exactly. Like, fam. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, come on. And, and, like, I see it in places that don't even make sense. Yeah. Like, I'm like, why is this on film? Like, mm-hmm. but that's <laughs> like, because, again, film, sorry. It's either the it's client true. or whoever yeah, yeah, yeah. the shooter is at the time. They're saying, oh, this will I hate look when cool it's poorly done, too. But man's don't know. Like, you Google, you went on YouTube and you Googled Super 8 overlay. Downloaded the know. first one and threw it on. Like, at least try to make it look real. <laughs> man's, don't, man's just don't know. Because you can make it look quite real. Sometimes there's videos where we can't tell, actually. Mm-hmm. Right? So, um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. There, there's, yeah, there's definitely trends in everything. And music videos, there the, there's those trends right now. And exactly. hip-hop. You know, I, so we're talking about hip-hop mostly. And R&B, I should mention. Because mm-hmm. I don't think, I don't think, <clears throat> do we see Super 8 and, like, Country, like we don't even watch those, so yeah, we can't really. Touch I wouldn't it, yeah. even know. 
But yeah, hip hop and R and B is what we're talking about. Well, because hip hop and R and B is like the they're it's like, the shit. It's that's, the, that's also what's the pop. Up. It's also the, it's what the pop. That yeah, is what pop. pop. Yeah, like by right now, so pop so. is yeah. hip hop is pop. Yeah, at the, end at the, of the moment. Day. Yeah, and pop simply means popular culture, which simply means that's what people are the most popular bumping right now. genre. So, yeah, so it is what it is. I mean, I just think if you if you're a client and you're trying, you should try to be different. I think that's how. Why it's not just the clients here. I remember that it's the shooters as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't put all responsibility you know, on the clients. I get it. Clients are going to be clients at the end of the day, right? Yeah, and shooters, shooters be should be different. Shooters. Yes, shooters should be different in yeah. some way. Yeah, but shouts out all the good guys out there that are killing it. You know, and I, when we say different, like I get it. Like not everything is one hundred percent original. Yeah, listen, all all the videos, all the treatments we write. We're taking inspiration from other music videos. Oh, let's just call him out film. quick. I'm gonna call him out because whatever. I don't mind having enemies myself. Kid, they just take references from movies. Yeah, it's really that. Simple. All their music videos are classic movies. Simple, as their thing. It's true. It's That's true. all it is. Like, and we're talking like they'll replicate shots from a like, specific movie. They go like that far into. They'll it. like stick and on lighting. one movie, yeah. and it'll be that movie is the music video, basically. Yeah. So it's like what people are doing, and it's mm. not that it's a problem, but it's uh, it's. I wonder what else other people, other companies, yeah. other shooters are able to do if they don't have that. And the problem with that too is like, so that's their specific style is replicating classic movies. So when you go into the business of being like, hey, I want to make a video that looks like this video, it's like, oh, kid did that. Now you're doing a thing where you're copying somebody who copies something. Exactly. So <laughs> you know, you're being a you're a. You're a, you're a, a yes version man. of yeah. You're a version of a version, you know. <laughs> exactly. That's that's wild. Yeah. So it's yeah. like that's when it gets ske- like sketchy. Like if it's something that you come up with on your own, where it's like, hey, I wanted to take some inspiration from this and some inspiration from this. That then it becomes part of your voice because it's things that because that's what we're tra- talking about. Like we're yeah. inspired by things like, and that's what we take from. But then we rein them in into our own voice. But then when you're trying to do something where it's like, I want this to look exactly like what somebody else has done. Then that's where you, your voice isn't. You you're literally not putting anything original into it. You can still put original ideas into things that you've kind of taken out. You know what I mean? Like yo, I don't want to hear a client tell me oh, I want to add eight millimeter effect. Mm. Like, oh my god! Unless you have a reason why you want that to be in the video. Like right? fan, I've seen like thirty videos in the last six months that have that. Yeah, exactly. I think it's actually an easy way to just get extra B roll too. <laughs> that's maybe why yeah, I actually sure. do it. Yeah. It actually I, is. That's how I use that VHS stuff. Like VHS yeah. is great for B roll. Yeah, yeah. Even the fake one with the app on your iPhone, like it's it's actually pretty solid. Yeah, <laughs> like Some, you, yeah. It's great for it's just great for B roll. It's come clutch, and we've used it, and it's fine. Like I get it. It's but fine. there still needs to be that element that yeah. you know where it's like, hey, this is our idea. This is what we brought to it. You know, this is something that. Mm we haven't seen because it, it, I think people get so caught up in, in trying to play it safe and, and think that if we put something together that people have already seen, it's like, okay, they're not going to be too surprised by it. And it's like, yeah, they're just there you go. consume and, it like right away, you mm-hmm. know? And that's what I was talking about off the podcast. That I think a lot of people are just scared to be different yeah. and put out like work that's different. Yeah. So when or we, even just something, yeah. Like if it's something that's, I guess, personal to you you might not want to reveal all of that yeah. you know, maybe something like that too so yeah. you try to cover it like, up they're like okay you know if i make a video that d- does look like very similar to other videos that have come out already in toronto then like no one's gonna like call it, me out yeah it's, it's gonna yeah. blend in and i'm gonna yeah. look good yeah I'm, I'm just gonna look good i'm not gonna look like great i'm gonna look good exactly. like just average <laughs> like you know what i mean yeah. but th- that's not how you blow up you don't blow up being average like you have to blow up being different exactly like, be confident in the product like yeah. If you're not confident in the music that you're creating or the videos that you're creating or anything that you're Or that creating, you have something original to say. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. Then yeah. it's like you need to build that confidence because, yeah. yeah, we have – we've had clients. Like we're still waiting on music videos to drop just because like – Yeah. Man's the one. Man's scared, yeah. Man's oh, the, my God. I'm not calling out anybody, out. but we've shot a couple videos or whatever. That yeah, man. Unfortunately, we made them and they haven't come out yet. Yeah, because they're, they're too personal. But it's like, okay, then why did you choose this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah. Like I thought we were having a, a nice little moment here. This video is amazing. We, you know, we vibed when we met and everything like that. I asked you about when we're gonna drop the video. You told me a date, and I'm still waiting for it three months later. Yeah, it sucks. 
I understand a lot of the time, sometimes too, behind the scenes, you guys got stuff going on with yeah, releases. I was gonna say, like, there's no real right time. You can't, you can't get a, a blog to pick it up and blah, blah, blah. I get but it. What, when's the point where you're actually just going to drop it? You know what I mean? I get it. Yo, try to get it on the blogs. Go through that process. But if you don't do it, if you don't get there, fine. Just put it out, man. Like, who cares? Just put out the stuff, man. Put your work. Like, that's... You can't blow... You can't be successful if the work doesn't... Isn't out. Yeah. You can't... You know what I mean? Yeah. Like... Because that is one thing, like, I've noticed and I've kind of just let it go. But, yes, from time to time, it does kind of irks me. But, like, I'll even... I've, I've even told, like, Ian and Zach, like, a lot of the time, like, once I'm done an edit, once I'm done a video, I'm just done. Like, I don't care about it as much anymore. And I've yeah. just learned that that's what you need to do. You just need to let it go. For sure. But sometimes you'll just remember, like, yo, wait, that shit didn't even drop yet. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, and you'll be like, damn, like, what the fuck is going on so, with it? Especially about how much time we put into stuff, and if it doesn't drop, yeah. it's kind of, yeah. uh, it's a bummer. It's exactly. a bummer, especially how low we get paid for it. And yeah, like, think about it. You guys but, are you're, you guys are making $1,000 videos right now, and you know that you don't want to stay there. You want to make $50,000, $100,000 videos. So obviously, when you are making those fifty hundred thousand dollars $100,000 videos, you're going to be looking back on these $1,000 videos being like, yeah, it's not... As good of a quality that that no. we want, but that's what you had to work with to get to where you are now. Exactly. So it's like, as far as I'm concerned, the first fifty thousand dollars video that's dope that we produce, anything before that wouldn't even exist in my mind anymore. No, but, <laughs> like, but it's also it needed. Like, it, that's what you needed to do to get it's you part there. Of the process. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you have, have to understand that. Yeah, right. that's how it is with everything. You can't just come out right out of the gate. Like, yeah, you see people who yeah. you think that, oh wow, this was their first song and it. Blew but you up. don't. Yeah, you don't know what was happening behind exactly. the scenes a lot of the time. Yeah. Yeah. And people you are out here talking. They're out here yeah. making moves on the lows. They're out here. Some people are already out here talking to labels. Yeah, and they haven't even dropped a song yet. You know what I mean? Yeah, there are the people who who blow up because something went viral. That's but that's it's, not. It's viral. always going to be you. Yeah, it's viral. Oh, I'm just going to say right now, you. like if, you can't plan viral like virality. Yeah, you know, you like, now's the that. now's the time to blow up in Toronto because this is the wave right now. Mm -hmm. like, exactly. You know what I mean? Like if you're a little too late, a couple years from now, you might just miss it. Because mm -hmm. you're waiting. Some next. Some next uh, American city might be the next city to blow. This is the one thing you I learned I mean? so. when I, while being in a relationship. There's <laughs> no good time. If you got bad news to tell your girl, yo, just fucking tell her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you got a video to drop, music to drop, some type of art to drop, whether that be a painting, a drawing, whatever, <clears throat> just drop the shit. No just one cares. It. You're going to get the same reaction if you drop it today or you drop it six months from now. It doesn't matter. Just You're going to get the same the reaction. Just do it. So then the next six months, you'll have how many more extra songs? Exactly. <laughs> you'll have like, you You would have improved. You would have grown as an artist, but you waited around for six months to drop a song. That doesn't make any sense to me. Just drop like, the shit. <laughs> like, Just drop so. whatever you're working on because it's like, no one's waiting for it. Your friends and supporters, yes, they're friends and supporters, but they don't really give a fuck. They're getting blasted with new music every fucking day. Yeah. Blasted with new fucking memes. Blasted with new fucking Especially music Especially now videos. with the way music is. Blasted with shit every day, man. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't matter. Just drop your shit because it's going to disappear on the Instagram timeline anyways. Yep. That's true. <laughs> like, Damn. That's real. That's real. You know what I, or it's not going to be seen man, by everybody because yeah, yeah. you're not in their yo, fucking algorithm. I yeah. never thought about that. Yo. Like, the you, you the know song I mean? you put on Instagram, bro, it has like a 12-hour lifespan. <laughs> Yeah, and, it's Not, done. and that's only to like a hundred people, and it's like to what uh, thirty percent of your followers or whatever the algorithm puts out. Exactly, <laughs> it doesn't fucking matter. That's man. crazy, bro. No one's checking back in <laughs> when you tell us there's a release date for your video on Friday. No, no. one really checks in because uh, unless they see engagement on your post on the Friday, because people are finally commenting on your post saying, "Oh, this is fire." Yeah. People are adding you to their story, so therefore your story goes to the top of people's Instagrams. That's how that shit works. Mm -hmm. It's not every. It's not the buildup. It's the actual drop. Yeah, yeah, it is. And that shit is again lasting only a few hours. Only thirty percent of your followers are gonna see it. So it is what it is, fam. Think about the way that you consume music, right? Like, I don't care when big name artists say like, "Oh, I got a music video dropping. Yeah, I got an album sake. drop in next month." Like yeah. Kanye says, uh, what, "I think Kanye said he's dropping an album. What, like sometime this month?" When the hell's Yandi? When Kanye's when been dropping out? an album for how many years? Yeah, when the fuck's Yandi coming out? <laughs> <laughs> it's not even Yandi anymore. Well, yeah. What the fuck is it now? Jesus something. I don't know. Yeah, Jesus, Jesus part two. I don't know. 
Oh, it's not <laughs> no, it's some it's some kind of gospel thing. But like, you know what oh, I mean? Like, okay. no one gives a fuck when it when it's nah. coming out. It, it it only matters when it drops. You There's know? very few know. artists I really care about. Like, okay, I gotta check my calendar. Mm. There's an album coming out. There's I'm very few artists. Calendar. Yeah. There's very few. There's, There's like even been three. artists that have been like, <laughs> my video is dropping this time, and I totally forgot. Yeah. And I see the video a month, two months later, and I'm like, shit. And it's I one of your favorite this. artists. And it's one of my favorite yeah. artists that I was already bumping that same day. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. No, that happens dropped. all the and time. When your fan base yeah. is two thousand people, just think about that. Yeah, man. <laughs> like, and it goes to it just goes to like show like you know the way that yeah the way social media and the algorithms work like you can miss this shit like yeah, yeah it's exact that same shit's happened to me where like yeah, yeah, yeah. I've watched the video a month later it's like I swear I was bumping this guy you have to go click like, on their ago, profile how did I not see this it. video you know you I'm not to, even seeing yeah. posts I yeah. don't even see posts on Instagram from the, these guys from yeah. Guys. Ian will drop a picture and I'll see it two days later. Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> you know what that's I mean? Why, really from you? Yeah. Because you'd be one of those people where the algorithm favors. That's what you think. But that's a lot of the time I don't see your pictures that's until crazy. a couple of days later. And I'll be like, oh shit, same. say word. The people who are consistently liking all my photos all the time and the people who look at my stories are generally people who see that shit. Yeah, so no, there's pictures where I, like, I, I, didn't, it, I didn't like your shit. And I'm like, I swear, I, yeah, exactly. I would have liked it if I, I seen it. I would have liked this. And yeah. then you look yeah. at the, the day, it was two days ago. Yeah. Right? Sometimes it misses Yesterday. it. That's yeah. weird. Yeah, man, it's crazy. Damn. So just drop your fucking content. Yeah, drop whatever the, the fuck you're working yeah. on. Just just drop it. You don't need this big buildup. You're not somebody yet. I'm not trying to hate on you, but you're not somebody yet. Mm-hmm. Like when you get some more fans, when you get some more clout, you get whatever, you get you, you get signed, you, you again, you do great independent, whatever. When you can start actually making those moves and you can start making the shot, calling the shots, then yeah, go for it. But mm-hmm. until then. Hype is bullshit anyways. Just drop it. Even for big it. artists, yeah, hype even is for bullshit. Even for fucking big artists. Like I, I fuck with those like random secret like albums people drop. Actually, and I prefer I actually that like shit. that. I actually like that. I prefer that because yeah. it's like, okay, cool. The music's fucking out. You didn't promise me something and then you had to delay it for another three months for whatever yeah. reason. And then didn't end up dropping it at all. Building up all of our anticipation for what? For nothing, or sometimes the shit's just trash. Yeah, hype is bullshit. That shit works for like movies and stuff. I don't think it works for music the same way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think it does. Movies, it works for. You see a trailer for a Marvel film two months in advance, you get excited for it. I don't know if it works the same way for music. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, it, I, no, yeah. I think there are people who do care about stuff like okay, that. Okay, like, I'm sorry. I'm, no, I'm sure I'm, I guess yeah, I yeah. guess there are, but like, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. I feel like most, like, no, but you, you are right. Like, people do care about movie that like timelines way more than they would about music for sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, because yeah. that that actually does matter because movies are this experience where you, if you do care as somebody who wants to watch it on the opening day, yeah. you'll go on and watch it on the opening day. But like, there's been like, you know, whenever when when Drake dropped that old tape he dropped or whatever i'm like i'm not gonna listen I think to it this sounds right bad now, but i think it's the way like we consume movies versus music i mean if you're your favorite favorite artist drops an album you're gonna listen to it in a way that someone else who's just kind of likes the artist is gonna listen to yeah but with movies i feel like people the way they're paying attention to a movie watching it visually and audio like with audio they consume it a little different than music yeah music a lot of times especially with the music coming out now it's just something to listen to on the subway kind of thing yeah so it's consumed more like they're yeah. not as engaged in it yeah. than with movies. There's this, uh, you know what I mean? JPEG Mafia thing. He's doing like this release where he's like talking to artists and stuff on YouTube. It's actually really good. But he was talking to James Blake and he was saying like um, how he doesn't like telling people that his new album is like 18 songs because that sounds like it's a lot. But they're all like True. two minute songs. So it's only like 40 minutes. Yeah. But even if you were to have an album that's like an hour long, it's like people are like, oh, that's too long. But then they'll go and he's like, you'll go and watch an Adam Sandler movie on Netflix for like an hour Trash. 20. You know what I mean? It's like you're going to spend that time doing that. But yeah. I guess I, I understand it too. Like I can't sometimes just sit down and listen to music. But he makes a good point. You'll where binge it's watch like, a show for 12 yeah. hours. And it's like w- when you're watching <laughs> Netflix, are you really watching Netflix? Like I, when I put on a movie like that where I know that I'm yeah. just going to be on my phone, you're not actually watching or consuming yeah, it's that. Just this on. So why not just have the album on? That's also you know? true. This album that you think is so long, and really, like for the most, like for the most part, the people who still put together hour-long albums actually care about albums, except uh-huh. for the ones who you know do the Spotify. They I, they do it for the Spotify. You know, I never thought about this till right now. People are more picky with what they listen to than what they watch. Yeah, for yeah. sure. That's interesting. Though. People are watching trash. Like people will watch anything. They'll watch Friends for the fourteenth time, yeah. whatever. But like music, they're really picky. Like yeah. I only listen to this, to this one genre. Whatever type shit, yeah. but with they watch every genre genre of movies, yeah. horror, drama, whatever. But with documentary, whatever. But like m- music is like usually usually one or two genres typically. So I noticed that people were picky with that. It's weird. I never thought about that. 
Yeah, me either. Yeah, it's weird. Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there are those people listen to every genre, or not every, but a lot more wider selection of music. I hope so. There are people like that. I'm I'm one of those type of people. Like I don't just listen to hip hop. I listen yeah, to I listen to R and B, of course. I listen to pop. I listen to. I mean, country's about the only thing I don't listen to. I was on an EDM wave for a bit, you know. I was on. <laughs> I remember the dubstep wave. Dubstep. dubstep wave was crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dubstep wave was wild. <laughs> you know, there's a few indie rock I listen to, experimental stuff like Bonnie Iver, stuff like that. Like I'll listen to that type of stuff, too. So. I feel you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a man like that too. Like I could be bumping fucking Gucci. Yeah, like you're listening. And my young man. To us, from Soldier Boy to like the gor- the gorillas. Boy. Yeah, and then I'll be bumping <laughs> the gorillas, the yeah. strokes. Yeah. I mean, yo, fuck it. Yo. Let me put on some Bob Marley. Or like yo. Nickelback or fucking. Okay, uh, chill on the Nickelback. Nickelback's <laughs> lit. I don't yo. know anybody that listens to Nickelback. Yo, <laughs> yo, yo, yo boy, Zach, Zach listens over here. to fucking Nickelback. Nickelback or I was. I don't know why I use that example. Said Nickelback three times. Yeah, like podcast, you had to so say Nickelback so many yo, times. Yo, censor that out, yo. <laughs> <laughs> no, <don't fucking> kill me. <laughs> I was thinking of more, uh, not Nickelback. Um, I blanked out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just blank out on that. Yo. Yeah, I'm actually a little tipsy, yo. <laughs> Off of a brew? Yo, shut up. <laughs> We're sipping some regular brews out here. Yo, this guy can't I think because I had no food for a bit. Check, check. It needs to be empty to get that bag. We got inside. the rosé on deck. We got, the, the, we got the rosé. We got the rosé. We got the rosé. Rosé. That's what he did on Paxton. Got the ri- <laughs> Don't kill me. Can you redo that? Bro, I have a whole glass. Well, we should have just used water. Like. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you're going to make a man chug so, so Ciroc. We're doing, we're doing this take where he has to pour liquor in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a glass, whatever. But we're using real Ciroc, so we had to do the take several times because we kept fucking up the angles. So we have this poor guy drink like a third of a bottle in like a minute or a few minutes. Like, yeah. and, about, and then at the end of and it, then he got lit. He got lit. Yeah. And then yeah. at the end of the day, we're like, yo, why don't we just use water? Yeah. And we're like, why didn't you just use water? You can't even tell. Like, <laughs> just mix that shit. Also, we gonna have that shit saved for later. Yeah, bro. exactly. Now he's gonna save it a bottle. <laughs> and then meanwhile, like Kevin drank half the bottle. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then he's oh yeah, but, shit, but at the same time, I mean. It was all good. Yeah. yeah. You got lit. Go watch that video, yo. That video is fucking underrated, man. 750 pass it. Let's get it. So good. Okay, yeah. Anyways. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's Kevin. Yeah. Yo, you're fucking up. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I was taking a walk today, you know, smoking a J and uh, hey? going through the um, our old stomping grounds, the Fleming Field. So I went and sat down, whatever, on a bench by a soccer field and then... The kids came out for recess. It was like two o'clock or whatever. So they wear uniforms now. You, you, you yeah, know, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So it was it was a little because we never wore uniforms when we were at that school. So when they came out, they came pouring out wearing the same fucking like tan color, and it kind of threw me off because at that point I was a little high already. So I'm like, yo, this is weird. So then like, why? Because so where I was sitting, there's like, there's the Fleming Field. There's like a little soccer field in the middle where you know the kids aren't allowed to go during recess, and then there's the Christian school on the other side, St. Bede, they have their field too. So I'm sitting in this field where it's empty and I'm watching these kids kind of like navigate this, uh, this perimeter, you know, that they, that they can't escape. So you're seeing, you know, the kids who play soccer, you're seeing the kids who play basketball, you're seeing the, the kids like us who used to be exploring the farther the fur, the farthest the reaches farthest of reaches. where we could go during recess right and wow, it's that's so mad like metaphorical yeah it's yeah. so weird that to see these kids like that's that's how we all grow up like we all grow up a bell rings we all come out and we we have freedom we're playing the games that we want to play or whatever but then the bell rings again and literally like cows we go running back and I'm hearing teachers whistling to like rein these kids in and shit, you know? And it's like fucking cattle. Yeah. And it's like, it's like, (laughs) yeah, you know, obviously it's, it sounds like a man just being high and talking about shit. Like we're all enslaved, but it is true though. That is what's going on. Like if you take it in, like from the ages we're four years old until at least 18, we're expected to be designed to the system where we're, we're listening to authority. We're, we're conditioned to we're literally conditioned to bells and stuff like that like exactly. if you sounds so, sometimes i'll be walking home from from uh from school uh, wherever like from the bus or whatever and you can hear the like even in the summertime the, the the school bell will still be playing i'll hear it and i'm like it gives you that little bit of a flashback of like oh shit yo recess gotta go back inside you that's know? wild like, yeah yeah you know i feel that when that happens and uh so weird <laughs> so so i i remember hearing this thing about yeah. like um i think psychologists agree that we can start forming memories 
uh, and retaining them like when we're four years old. Mm -hmm. So anything before that, it's like kind of it's kind of iffy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So think about it. Literally, we have this time period of when we're free from zero to three. You know, obviously, you know, our parents are taking care of us, but we have freedom to cry and, you know, wake shit. up and do shit anywhere and yeah. piss and whatever. Whatever the fuck you want to do, you can kind of do when you're zero to three. As soon as you can start remembering things, you're put into school and 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 designed basically to be contained by the system, you know. And and I think it part of that is the reason why so many people are conditioned or they they crave this, like... This order, being told what to do, being told when to do it, being told how to do it, you know, because right. we're we're born literally eight hours a day. We we from the time we can form memories, we're told to to you're, go and do these things. You you're know? basically your your whole life is basically conditioned. Your first eighteen years yep. is conditioned to make sure that you have a routine. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And and I think about it from like a perspective of like an Indian person, where my mom's dream. You know, and she's gotten a lot better with this now being from here. But like if she was still in India, her dream would be for me to be in school from the time I'm four years old to like 30. Yeah. Just keep fucking going. Like as long as I've, I've had mean, relatives who have like, you know, multiple degrees because they just keep staying in school. How much learning? Yeah, to leave school eventually. Like, mm -hmm. I don't get that. At what point do you I say swear. like, okay, I'm a, I'm a fully functioning adult. Obviously, you can keep learning and obviously yeah. everyone should always continue to keep learning, but there's a point where you have to be like, okay, I can start to control my own destiny. Yeah. But I feel like the way that the system is designed, it's, it's true. Like I remember reading this in, in a, a university uh, reading that I had, which is ironic because I actually learned it in school, <laughs> but our, our school system, the American school system, you know, and we're influenced by that same system is designed, it was influenced by this 17th or 18th century, like Austrian school system or whatever, which was right. designed to systematically, you know, keep the system going to, to filter people through, you know, you give right. people grades and it's like, you're going to be in this top tier. You're going to be in the service industry. You know, you're going to exactly. be, and, and, and we tell, we tell like kids know, like you could ask any eight year old on the street right now, like, uh, how, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? And they probably have a good idea based on their grades, where they're going. Maybe they can still say, yeah, I want to be an astronaut. But if you're giving that yeah. kid straight D's, he's not thinking that he's going to be an astronaut when he grows no. up. You know what I mean? No. And by the time they're in high school, that's what happened you me. can definitely tell people like, and you know, that's the problem is like, there's so many talented people who just don't fit the school system. Exactly. You know what I mean? And that's, yeah. that's who it's, I it's am. Not, it's not that's, foolproof. I mean, I it's not it's not the guarantee. It's, it's a good way to keep the system going. The typical but it's not entrepreneur doesn't fit the school system. Yep. You know what I mean? Because sure. entrepreneurship's not really. And built, I feel like everybody school. in this room kind of slipped through those cracks where we're just yeah. like, yo, I don't think this is the the kind of be all end all or whatever. Yeah. I uh, I literally had a conversation with my grandma the other day. I was just chilling on the couch watching my animes. And uh, she came down and she's like, she came down to have a serious talk with me. Mm. I'm like, yo, fam, what do you want, dog? <laughs> she came up to me and she's like, so when are you going to finish school? <laughs> oh, jeez. So for those that don't know, I went to Centennial College. I went there for their film broadcasting, digital media, and whatever else program. They named it something crazy long. There's like Zach, four. Ian and I went there. Yeah, there's like four things. It's like radio. Yes, it's just like I don't know, man. It's too long. Just and basically, <laughs> my intentions. I've never been an. I've never been a school person. I keep telling people this since about grade three, grade four. I was like, okay, I'm done. Like I don't. Care. Yeah, and I can attest to that. He was, he was <laughs> yeah. done with school since, and, and since like, I knew him. He was done like, with school. Yeah. As someone like you growing up, you're, you're gonna, you're, you're gonna, f like, when you're really young, you're gonna feel like you're like a loser. Like you know exactly. what I mean? Like that's what I'm gonna like, tell you. You're a failure. Like, I, I, I will say this: is the one thing the I always had was my confidence. I've always yeah. been a confident person, so I was okay. like, I wasn't really worried about shit. But cool. I've always been just been done with school. Never right. fucked with math. Failed math aggressively. <laughs> failed math. I got R's in math. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You don't know what an R is until you get one. When you see an R on your report card, it's serious. Yeah. I had several R's. Yeah, I don't know what an R is, yo. Exactly. <laughs> I like a C, C minus at the best. <laughs> no, R's are serious. That's worse than a fail. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's like... So she asked me... Anyway, she asked me because I, when I went to Centennial, I went there with the intentions of simply meeting new people. Yeah, we, we went over this. Brushing, yep. uh, brushing some skills, yep. blah, 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 as you know. So uh, she came to me and asked me, you know, like, when are you going to finish? And I told her, I'm like, I'm not interested in completing. I'm like, that was never my intention or my goal. That wasn't the point. You know what I mean? But she's like, 
but you need to get your paper. And I asked her, I'm oh like, God. what does the fucking paper mean? That's the old way of thinking. You know, exactly. And that's what it is too. It's, it's part of people's, it's basically been drilled into people's minds that this is something that they're going to need. Yeah. So I asked her, what do I need that paper for? She had nothing to say to me. Yeah. Cause I told her I have a fucking company. Yeah. I don't need to, I don't need to be hired by anybody. I have a company. Yeah. No one cares. And, and even <laughs> if you were trying to get hired, they don't care about that. They paper. don't give a fuck about my paper. This, they care about my videos. Listen, I get it. If you're a doctor, you have to go to fucking medical school. Yeah. Because no one's letting you do open heart surgery when you haven't <laughs> been exactly. to school for no, it. That's what I mean too. It's I like get it. the school system works for people like that. It works. Like you want to be a doctor, it works yeah. in certain works. spots. Yeah. But you know when you're I mean? somebody that is a creative or yeah. entrepreneur or just somebody that just doesn't fuck with the shit, you're not getting it no. for whatever yeah. reason, you, you're not dumb. Yeah, it's you. There's other there's other things for you. That's what it is. If you're not able to pay attention in class, for example, because you can't sit down and blah, blah, blah. You don't have ADHD necessarily. You might. Maybe right. you're just a fucking dancer. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I fucking yeah, mean? Maybe this shit doesn't interest you. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like, but, have you ever seen somebody walk out of a movie or just stop listening to a song? Maybe it's just because they don't like it. Exactly. But we can't do this with school. We have to imagine like. This movie, imagine a movie that you walked out of or you, you turn it off after the first five minutes and it, it happens to everybody. Exactly. But imagine that you couldn't turn it off and you'd have to stay there for 14 years minimum. That sucks. <laughs> yeah. You need to watch this fucking movie for 14 years. Yeah. Or else yeah. you don't get your paper to leave. <laughs> that's it. You know what I mean? Like, that's fucking trash. I think, I think there's more like self-discovery in who you are in school than anything else. Like, exactly. And that's where I more feel than like just the content that's where I feel like I've gotten yeah. my confidence from. It was from me being in school, knowing that I was basically done with this shit. Yeah. And saying, okay, I wasn't necessarily saying, okay, how else can I grow here? But it was like, it was like, what else can I do? Yeah. And, and so I almost feel like the you know, social aspects of college and university, if you're doing it in a productive way. Mm-hmm. Not like just doing drugs all day, <laughs> like actually in a productive yeah. way. The social aspect of college, university could actually be it could be helpful. better than like the classes you're sitting in. Yeah, like, exactly. You know yeah. what I mean. So, and again, that's why I went to Centennial because I yeah. wanted to be around people that were doing the same shit and yeah. trying to figure it out as well. You know what I mean? I would yeah. say like to to directly criticize the school system. The one thing that it I think it does create is the fact that people learn how to finesse it. And then mm. they learn and how. That's exactly what I they, did. They, yeah. <laughs> no, and people learn how to do the minimum. And then that's kind of what is instilled in you. It's like, hey, I could get by doing this. And, you know, people aren't going to be impressed, but they're not going to be like, hey, exactly. you're, you're slipping behind. So it's like, if I just keep doing this my whole life, then I'm going to be okay. And I feel like it instills, like, in a lot of people coming through the school system, I feel like that's what it instills is this idea that yeah. just do just do the bare minimum and you're fine, you know? And But they're still doing that just to work towards that paper. Yeah. Which is but, still dumb, But right? then... The, so to please their parents. Yeah, it's like, it's usually, the idea that it's right? like, you can do this much and it's like, it's not a lot, but people will still be okay with that. Exactly. And it's like, you can make... Uh, Sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year, and people are gonna be okay. Yeah, he, you know they're doing okay, and they're, you know, there you can apply yourself and make the hundreds or whatever in two hundreds. But like, yeah, are, are you doing something that that fulfills you? Like, you know what I mean? Exactly. Like, at, at a certain point, think about the difference between one hundred thousand dollars and two hundred thousand dollars, and and if anywhere in between that, uh, uh, is there something that you and en- you enjoy waking up? Like, you wake up and. Like I now, because I remember back in school, like especially in grade 12 when Manza used to have to wake up at like 7 a.m. And I was right. going to sleep at like 2, 3 in the morning and, and I had math class every fucking day in grade 12. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't want to wake up for this <laughs> shit. But now I wake up. It's not it's not like I wake up and I'm like, oh, the, the day is like amazing. I wake up and I'm like, oh, shit, I could do whatever the fuck I want to exactly. today. You know? Not all exactly. of us here bad at math. I'm terrible at math. <laughs> I'm actually trapped. I didn't take... I mean, I'm good at math, but it's not like something that that is... A, is a product of the system. It's just something yeah. that like, it's something that I was good at. It's like not, you know what I mean? Yeah, That's yeah. all it is. You, people are good math. at things. That's all it is. Yeah. You know, you know how you could like stop taking math. Yeah. Like, as soon as that happened, I stopped taking math. Yeah, I didn't take math in the 11th and 12th grade. But yeah, I feel like <laughs> basically everybody <laughs> I knew, they were either, they're either like kind of good at math and then they took it because they thought they needed it for, to, because they wanted to do something in science in university or they're like, you know, I'm not good at it and yeah, I don't yeah. need it. So I'm going to stop. And I don't feel like there's any, there's like, I, I feel like I was one of the only people where it's like, I'm good at math and I'm just going to keep taking it just because I kind of like it, which mm-hmm. is fine because it's something that I'm good at. So I like, but there isn't a lot of that. Like, I also like music, but there was no chance of me taking that in high school. Exactly. You know what I mean? No. Yeah. 
you to get into university, yeah. you have to get the math credit or the the English credit, one or the other. Yeah. Those are the main ones to get into university. Yeah. So well, that's all I did. I, I was I was one of those finessers, like yeah. You know how many serious sit downs I had to have with my fucking teacher. No, but the difference is that uh, you you knew yeah. that it wasn't something that you weren't gonna have to take anything out of this. There are people who who are finessing the system, but th- that's the skills that they're yeah, trying to take the, with the them. You know what exactly. I mean? Like you knew that you weren't gonna do any career with math or whatever, so you didn't need to apply yourself in that. But there are people who aren't applying themselves and they're trying to get a job in yeah. science or business or something. You Those know? are the real liars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like if it's something that you think you're gonna do, at least try. You exactly. know, I'm not shitting on you if you wanna take a if you wanna do a job in business, finance. Oh, health, fine. science, whatever I mean, like, because those are the jobs that school can help. In you, a lot of ways, I you're recommend fucking around going. And 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 that's Depends. what you said you want to do. Then what the fuck are you doing? You know exactly. Yeah. yeah, we're saying we're coming from an artistic perspective where it's like if you're yeah. if you're a, somebody who thinks that they're interested in the arts and you're going through school right now, just know that there's been generations, us included, before you who hated school or or hated yeah hated the 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 reason or that ability for school to kind of suck that life out of you, you know, because I, I felt as soon as I hit high school, like I couldn't do anything creative, you know, because mm-hmm. none of the projects lined up for it. And why the fuck no. would I be doing that in my spare time? Because I, I got to do all this goddamn homework. So when yeah. I have my spare time, I'm playing video games, you yeah, know what exactly. I mean? Yeah. And that's what the, the system conditions us to do. Like, that's what all my friends did too, because it's like... They condition you to take... Take Thank, that time away. And thankfully, focus on we were playing you, rock band and Matt Guitar and Hero. Exactly. And when we were playing video games, we were listening to music. So by some weird uh, like miracle, we were actually <laughs> progressing our musical yeah. careers while uh, you know playing video games. You know, I mean, but for me, it was like uh, early YouTube inspired yeah. me to create videos, which inspired me to create films. Which now I do music videos, yeah. which I've understood that. It's like these weird the things career. that are like, yeah. you know, yeah. YouTube came around at that time, like for our generation, you know? So it's Nothing like, I did in school decided what I wanted to do mm-hmm. exactly. for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. Nothing that Nothing. I ever did in school. Yeah. Um, a class or two helped me. For oh, my yeah, interest, yeah, for sure, yeah. But the initial uh, interest teacher, was nothing you know, in school. Might have said something that stuck with you. You know, or, there was never I took. Sure. There was never I took a science class and I wanted to be a, like a scientist. Like mm-hmm. it just didn't know. It happens to some people. I also think that like the system sets, I think it puts too much pressure on super young adults to like decide what they want to do Make for the decisions. rest of their life. Right. And the way, yeah. So when you're 17, 18, you have, you the next step is to go into university. Yeah. To choose your career. For the next yeah. four years, you're choosing your career at 18. Yeah. Right. And if you, and then sometimes you get stuck because the university is expensive. Well, you so think, you, yeah. You can't even afford to be like, I'm going to switch, or you don't have the time to switch it up three years yeah. later. Like, you're just kind of, well, fuck, I guess I'm going to be a lawyer. Oh, fuck, I hate it. But I guess the way you it think pays ab- the bills. Yeah. The way like, to think about it is know? like, we're running on, imagine we're running on like iOS 1 or whatever. Whatever the first iPhone was running on, that's where we're running on because yeah. we were running on the system. The way that this system was designed was like, when people are 18, they got to find that job. They got to, find the, the, the yeah. their family, they got to get their house. Yeah. But that's because men's were dying when they were 50 and 60 years yeah, old. People don't we're living until we're 80 now. Exactly. We have an extra 20 years. People are and so true. I never thought about that. You know that. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Men's don't think about that. And like, I don't know if we're, if we're going to switch the examples, it's like, you know how a lot of males or some males that are in relationships with females, they feel like they're almost pressured to wife this girl up mm-hmm. or even some girls feel there's like there's a this, timeline there's a time oh after five you know years I mean? it's awkward why haven't you exactly. married her yet and we and <laughs> as us as males yeah we understand there's a there sometimes is a point for some females where you can't have a baby for example there's a biological a certain, clock for women past a certain time we get to that be fair. but at the same time yeah. there's but no need like for us 50 to something you know what i mean <laughs> there's no need for us to rush into all yeah. this stuff when we are living so long the reason why your parents or your grandparents were doing that, getting a house, being married. It's because they were dying off quick. Yeah, the, Their parents died off quick. Yeah. Or their also, grandparents the between, died off quick. The difference between our generation and, and their generation is like, some. I was like walking through the neighborhood and I was like looking at some of these houses and I'm like, yo, this would have been like, Two hundred thousand dollars back then, Not and now this house is like There's six, seven hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. they're like, like houses now. It costs a lot more. Yeah, you're allowed to take extra time. Yeah, you know what I mean. Don't we feel, have to? <laughs> don't feel like yeah. you're pressured because you're eighteen or yeah. whatever, and you have to go if, to university. If you're unsure what you want to do when you're don't, eighteen, don't just jump into some general exactly. like arts 
whatever yeah. or business. Think it's gonna work out because it doesn't. <laughs> also, think even about, worse, yeah. don't do something niche. Like, yeah. God damn it. So think of the, about the difference. Which, I feel like a lot Bad. of people they fell into that and they're like, oh shit, I'm 18 or you know I'm 20 whatever now. You know, they're I'm 26 now. It's like yo, your life has. And I thought that too. Like I, I thought used my to life, think that too. I thought my life I used would to be together. Like, when I need I was to have stage. everything together by the time I'm 26. Yep. I need to have this by I'm 30. By yeah. the time I'm 30, but then you wake up one day and then you are 26 and you're yeah. like. I'm oh, still 18. Or, I mean, like, what did you guys shit, think I'm you still, were going to be at 26? Oh, Just curious. Shit. I thought I was going to be living downtown in a condo. I thought I was going to have a whip. Yeah. By now, I thought, you know what I mean? I thought I was going to be thinking about putting a ring on my girl. Yeah. Just yeah, yeah. because I was like, you know, I have the money for yeah. it. And I'm in this basement right now. <laughs> in an old Yeah, it's jacket. not a bad thing, though. That's realistic. I, you know mean, I mean, we, we yeah. live in or we, we're in that kind of career where yeah. we can't have that five year plan because. At any time, so every time when I was since the time we've been making music, I always thought the next year I would have been blown up. So exactly you know, now and it's, it's at a, <laughs> now it's at a point where it's like it's like if you ask me where are you going to be from a year from now, I'm not going to say I'm, I'm going to be blown up. I'm just going to say I don't know. I could be here or I could be blown up. I don't give a it's shit. Really, hard to really yeah, the difference. you kind of accepted yeah, that. Yeah. Stop. All I'm trying to do is just yeah. make the music. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So it's like. By the time when I'm 30 years old, I could be here right now and I'm going to have to live with that. Or I could be with a family. I could have a house. I could, like, I don't know. But Shit could really happen yeah. really quick. Yeah. Wild, dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? Your whole life could just Real switch quick. up like that, though. It really could. In a year, you could have a kid. But you just have Not to be. Not by choice. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Damn you. <laughs> yeah, by accident. But I'm just saying. You never know. You just have to be, you like, know? ready for that, though. You could though. be in it's, LA it's, next yeah. year. Yeah. Signed. You never know. <laughs> you know what I mean? You never really know. But that's so, the thing, like, Unless they, unless some of these things, unless these jobs that we're talking about are things that you're striving for, like that's what like, I mean. At you want to be yeah. a scientist, you want to get into engineering, you want to yeah. do financing and shit like that. But a lot which of which those people do exist, and I fuck with them because I'm like, yo, you're a lot of actually people working doing for that. This. Don't want to do that. Exactly. They're just pressured you guys by their parents up, to do it. You guys it. are taking other people's jobs for what, yo? They're pressured by their, by their parents usually to do it. Because your parents told parents, you it was I a good parents job. Parents are a huge influence on what yeah, kids parents are choose to do. When they grow up, right? Yeah. So parents are fucking assholes. Your grandfather saying, was an engineer, and now you're an engineer. Yeah, type exactly. Shit, you know what I mean? So parents are assholes. They put a lot of pressure on you, and mm-hmm. they don't take in the type of pressure that you're put. They're putting on their children a lot of the time. I'm not saying mine has, but I felt that pressure personally from my parents. And yeah, some other people that I Luckily, fucked with when I was trying to figure out if I was going to go to university. Yeah, and I felt that pressure. I went to university. Man's was depressed. Mm-hmm. I that's the one thing in my life and I'm one of those guys that I can move on from anything like nothing's a big fucking deal to me but when I look back at me attending York University that is my one regret in life <laughs> that has changed everything in my life not necessarily for the worse because I've learned a lot but is the one thing where I was like fuck like if I just didn't do that if I just didn't go to York I'd be in such a different place probably a better place you know what I mean? You never know. That's, your, but that's like your too. regret. Like, that's my only, only regret, regret yeah. in life. Wow. That one right there. But it does. Te- it it did show you that that's not for, like definitively. That's not what you wanted to. Because that's how I feel too about going to York the same way. Like yeah. I went for six weeks, and uh, that was the first time in my life where I'm like in class, and I'm like. What what the fuck am I doing here? Because yeah. in high school it was like okay, I lasted I, longer than Kevin. That's why. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> six weeks. I, he was six weeks. I, I went to class for about the equivalent of six weeks. <laughs> but I was there for a What did yeah. you take? Um, I forget. What did you uh, take? Some like media, arts, digital media shit. Okay. You know, again, that generic arts program. That's that generic, you know, like. <laughs> they I just accepted like, you, if you if because you really they didn't want to go room. to university and you don't know what you want to do, I would say just take like business. Because at least you can apply business <laughs> yeah. to anything. I think that's the so best Kevin advice. Huh? I mean, no, <laughs> no, no, no I, I agree with what you're saying. <laughs> I agree with yeah. what you're saying, though. I yeah. get but at the same saying. time, are you going to spend how much yeah. on business yeah. when you can yeah. just learn it you yourself? Mean. So yeah. there's the other business argument. Business is the one thing like but anybody really could take and you could degree. actually kind of finish something yeah. with your business yeah, yeah, yeah. knowledge. If you really yeah. want that fucking degree then. But the difference was that I was going to Schulich, so it was like... Oh, yeah, you were... Kevin was in Schulich. Yeah, so... smart, bro. Kevin you got Kevin did his thing. Like, Kevin finessed his way into Schulich. My life, you could have met some dope people at Schulich, though. I did. It's just like... But I was looking at these people and they were 
telling me to come out to these extracurriculars, and I'm like, yo, bro, I'm I'm not trying to do this. Like, it's I'm like not the trying Harvard, to wear a suit. That's like the Harvard business school. It's like the, the fuck? for people who don't know, like Shu looks like the can almost like Canadian Harvard Business School like yeah. version, like yeah. Canadian. Like that's pretty, Kevin was there. He only lasted actually. six weeks. Yeah, Shit. man's were bored. <laughs> yeah, and like people could say it, it, maybe they thought uh, they could add, they could say it was too hard for me, but like I'll tell you, I was. I'll tell you, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell it you was it not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just man. I was just reading this material, and I'm like, yo, this has no bearing on my future, you know. And yeah. that was the first time I ever experienced that because in school, in high school, elementary school, there's no time when people tell you, like, hey, you don't need to learn this, and because exactly. for some reason they need to tell you, like, hey, you need to learn everything that you need to retain everything that, even though they know all the students are literally just cramming shit the night before the the literally the period before the test, yeah. you know. Like all that shit that you imagine all those tests that you just regurgitated shit that you learned because you put down like acronyms and you remembered all the different terms and shit and you don't remember any of that shit and none of that helps you. I always felt bad for the people that were actually studying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Eh? You know what I mean? Because I was like, shit, like, the I people was who, who were trying, yeah. like, they're on their study three days yeah. before. Yeah. The exam, like, exams are coming up. Everyone's stressing. I need to study. Let's study. Let's make a group chat and let's do this and that. Meanwhile, I'm here at Kevin's house playing rock band and shit. I'm waking up for my exams late. I'm showing yeah. up late, pulling you up. You still pass. And I'm still passing my class. I'm still getting my credit. <laughs> Bro, I'm putting like in the six months ago. The bare minimum. Didn't you just have an exam? Like, literally, like. <laughs> yeah. I had an exam. <laughs> Didn't pull up like during seven fifty. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah, I had the yeah. same day. I was here, you know. <laughs> for Centennial, I was here. I was doing that freaking uh, my English course. Uh yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. I pulled up. I did my thing. I was, yeah, I was, yeah, yeah. That was it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it doesn't matter, man. Like I pulled up late. I listen, think, having that that diploma, like Zach and I have, hasn't changed anything. That's Look, we're at the same like, level, fam. That's what I'm saying. I was we gonna, graduated. You didn't. We're at the same level. I was just gonna ask, like, <laughs> have your lives? No, we get the same opportunities. Because like, I feel like, am I better all... than you right now? Like, because that's what society's telling Never. me. <laughs> that I'm better than you right exactly, now. Exactly. You know Honest, I mean? Like to be honest, I didn't even know you didn't even. Like, I, f- I forgot you. You didn't even graduate. Like it doesn't fucking a, matter. Yeah. You know. What like I mean? am I getting more job opportunities than you right now? Because exactly. you know what I took out of really. your school experience. Because we don't talk about what you do in school on day to day. What I took out of it was the fact that you met you met Ian and you already knew Zach and you created the company. It's like yeah. oh, you already fulfilled everything you wanted to do. And worried. it's exactly what I told everybody I was gonna do. Yeah. But for some reason, some people thought I was going there for a diploma. <laughs> And I'm like, fam, no, I I don't care. Like, yeah. I went there to meet people and I met yeah. great people. Like, yep. I know a bunch of shooters now. I know I know a few people that I'm like, yo, I would like ride out for this person because they just showed me that they're real. You know what I mean? Yeah. Shouts out Gabby. Shouts out Emily. Shouts out. Shouts out. Hey. Who else? Matt. Mm. Shouts out. Painter. Bleep all their names. Shouts out. You know. <laughs> no credit. Shouts out the gang, yo. No, no shout out. Shouts out the Centennial <laughs> gang. But like, gang. it was just like me meeting all those people. There is what kind of like. That inspires me. That's what motivates me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, shit, that's a segue, low-key. But that's that inspires me to, you know, hey. be a better person, create hot shit. Kind of because I want to prove to them that because I didn't graduate, it doesn't mean that I'm any, you know, I'm any different from you guys. And also, like, I want to make sure out of all of us, I'm making the best shit. Like, or I'm involved in the best shit that's coming out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because for especially for arts programs, like... There can't be there, especially like the music program I went to. There wasn't an emphasis on getting that diploma, like that piece of paper that I have for that shit. That's tucked away in my drawer. Like saying, I don't man. put that up. All on my display. other diplomas have like, yossed them. Man. Yeah, I don't know where the fuck they are. I don't know where the grad pictures are at. My mom has. I'm pretty somewhere. sure my high school diploma. I, I, if you look on the back, it was like I was testing pens on it. You know what I mean? Like don't it's just a piece of paper for me at the end of the day. You know, that's like, what I was known for. Yeah. When we were going to Fleming, that's what I was known for. I remember Miss Lawrence's class. Every fucking math you test know. we had, I was drawing some math. Here's, here's an example of how proud like parents are, or my parents are. They bought a fucking special frame for the fucking thing. Mm. Yeah. Like they paid a good 80 and I'm like, bucks that's cute. for a frame to put like, the fucking cute. paper in. I'm like, that's cute, guys. That's cute. Like this is how proud you are of this. But paper. let's see, who's gonna what's gonna burn faster, this paper or your son? You know what I mean? Don't kill me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, if there's a if the house is on fire, which one's disappearing first? Mm-hmm. I, well, or technically you, I am because I'm going to be outside. Are, and which one are you saving? <laughs> you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, which like, one are you saving yeah. first? You know what I mean? I could name like a uh, hundred things that I would take before I took my diploma. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Thousands of things. Yeah. Right? Everything. 
<laughs> I'll pick up the empty bottles we have over here. Oh, that's like in the top 50 at You least. know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the yeah. Especially the, the white and the... Because we might not get that I'll anymore. be picking up other papers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Rolling yeah, papers. Yeah, no, like, yeah exactly. <laughs> Like little papers where we wrote down little yeah. shit, like little lyrics, like Sanfrey's fucking verse on the yeah, wall man. there. You know, I'd be, be taking that, that shit. Be, you know, not a fucking diploma. Yeah, fucking Sanfrey's verse. Man. I want to read that. <laughs> like man's shit. used to. Yeah, that's how we used to write verses because we oh, had the shit. mic in the corner there. That shit means way more to me than a diploma. Like the fact that Sanfrey put that shit on the wall, wrote it down, and like recorded that. Like you kept that there. Yeah. Now oh. I'm gonna just shout out the people that want the diplomas. One time, I get it. You, you, you again. You're working hard. Like for it's, you, it's about the work rather it's about than the, the work. Piece of paper. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, about yeah. saying, you know yeah. what? I got to this point. Exactly. I completely understand yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's also how me as a creative I feel when I finish a project. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. You know what I, you It's know what the I mean? same. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's just like it means different things to us. Like that paper can mean so much to you because if it's something you care about, then that it shows you the proof. For yeah. us, it's yeah, it's it's, it's having projects. that finished wanna... cut. It's having the video. You know what I mean. So right. so basically, drop your shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> basically, drop out. And make, yeah, drop uh, out and drop. Your drop shit. out and drop your shit. Drop yeah. out, make TikTok content. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I have this analogy, and, and it might piss people off, but I use this example where it's like. It's like you have a, you have people rather pay rather pay five hundred dollars for a mass produced Gucci belt that's made in where the fuck mass produced by a super rich corporate company and not pay someone like us to create a video handcrafted video from skills that we've spent years trying to trying to like gain and grow and went to school for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they'd rather spend yeah. the mass produced Gucci belt. That's, that's just exactly. making a bunch of super rich white people more rich. Exactly. So yeah. that's 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 what we're where that's where I mean that's where money. <laughs> I mean that's where the the divide between capitalism, between art and how much it's valued in terms of in in our society, right? And I feel like that's it goes back to our conversation too. Like you know, I was trying to think about like why don't the school why doesn't the school system cater more towards people like us who care about things like arts? And it's like straight up, I, I, it's like something where. It's not valued enough where people, the, the government is going to put money into it to kind of create these artists. It's got to be something that, in a, in a way, it kind of works to our benefit because it's something that, because it's so against the school system, you have to be so passionate about it that you're basically going against everything you know. Because exactly. I feel like everyone here, there was a point in, in, in my career, in your career, where we're like I was like, yo, I swear to God, I'm going against everything I ever was ever yeah, taught in school exactly, yeah. to do this. And if that's why I feel so shitty about it, but then that's also why I feel so good about it because it feels like you know we kind of broke out of the and system. I felt like I felt like when that happened, I was taking more control of my yep, life, yep. rather than following and worrying about what people had to say yeah. and this and that. And that's the one thing. Again, I've learned through being done with school in yeah. grade three. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was yo like fam like if you're not going to do this you got to figure something else out yeah. and that's what i spent my time doing instead yeah. while also having fun and doing stupid shit it was just like i was able to build my confidence and build that thing in me to say you know what i'm going to go against the grain i'm going to have to figure it out i'm going to mm-hmm. going to be i'm going to fail a lot yeah but the failures and everybody's heard this, but the failures are part of the progress. Yeah. You know? It's part of the yes. pro- the process. So that's the failures, you look at it as lessons. That's how you're gonna win one day. Yeah. Cause now you know, okay, this doesn't work. Maybe you should do this different. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you know what? Those failures at like they they meet they cost money. And, yeah, they do. And uh I think that's that's what part of leads us to like us as artists, we look at money in a different way because we understand uh, how important it is, but we also understand like how much it could just go away and nothing can come out of it. Exactly. But you have to understand that like that's part of that. The the like you have to pay for failure. Literally, that's, that's what, what we is. did. We You're paid paying. to fa- fail some in, in some things, you know. Because people would rather invest in something else and it pops yeah. off rather than themselves. And I can and I understand, you know, going back to your point about like, okay, I would rather spend five hundred dollars on this Gucci belt than uh, five hundred dollars on this video because. You know, people don't give a shit about this video as much, and like, you know, it, it, I actually, I, you know, I'm trying to think about it. Like, why I don't know why people would value a Gucci belt there's, more than there's than this. A video, I mean, but, I mean, you know, typically yeah. there is this image behind yeah. being an artist. Yeah, yeah, that people want to, but I mean, they look at artists that can't af- so, really afford the Gucci belt wearing it. 
So if yeah. we're gonna talk about artists in the Gucci belts, let's talk about one thing quick before we you know move on. But yeah, that appearance doesn't mean shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If you aren't able to actually deliver what you need, we've had a situation where yeah. we had uh, a music video shoot. And our shooter lived deep. Oh, my God. He lived deep, right? He didn't have a whip, nothing. Cool. Brampton. Cool. I don't know. There's a Brampton boy, yo. But he lived out. <laughs> Brampton's he lived, a big place, yeah. He lived far. Yeah. And it's totally cool. He asked us for a ride. Fine. Cool. We can make that happen. Yo, where do you live at, bro? Brampton. <laughs> this, if you watch the first episode of this podcast, it was <laughs> fucking... Temporarily called Morningside Avenue for mm. 30 seconds. Morningside Avenue, let's pull that up. Google that. Morningside Avenue to Brampton. That's crazy. Mm. So, but that's fine. We got him. We picked him up. He was kind of, they were kind of late because they had to drive up to fucking Brampton. We got him. But for the man to have the audacity to tell us he has no whip, he needs us to pick us up, he can't meet us at a TTC subway station, nothing. We have to get him from his house for him to pull up. And have the audacity to have on a fucking sparkly ass chain. Yeah. Like, that was crazy. Yeah. Whether it was real or fake, we don't know. <laughs> I don't That's care. Like, yeah. Let's just Pulling say it's Pulling up real. with a sparkly ass chain. <laughs> that means you're trying to pretend that it's a, it, either you're, you, you, you're trying to make people think that it's the, the real yeah. price or it is the real price. You know what I mean? You know? Yeah, whatever. And, yeah. But it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. He, and yeah. he took forever to get us the fucking video at the end of the day. Oh, How are you not delivering? You know what I mean? How you look like that? How are you going to pull up to the shoot? You're this big guy. You're this big shooter. You don't have a whip. You're living out of the next man's house or whatever, and you're pulling up with chains. But you can't get me your video. The video that you said you'd get priorities, me in time. Priorities, man. Like, yeah. People exactly. Where are people's priorities, priorities at? Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh my God, people's I didn't know, priorities it's are not crazy. Like I didn't that. know nowadays shooters want to look like the rappers. <laughs> Bro, shooters are the rappers now because people are finding out about us. Yeah. Shooters became cool, actually. The yeah, last shooters few became years. came cool in the last few yeah, years, yeah, and yeah. it's because like we are involved. We are involved in the music industry, if you will. You slowly, you kind of become yeah. a celebrity, yeah. if you will, because more people are going to know your name. Yeah. They're going to see your tag on the video. Instagram is you know what one I mean? reason why that's happened. Because exactly. before, there was no way of people knowing. But that's what I'm trying to say. So people we would were, rather except, like in the invest. description of YouTube, which no one cared about. Exactly. People would rather invest in yeah. their chains, their Gucci belts, and shit like that, rather than their craft. Yeah. Or you know what? Actually yeah. doing yeah. something that they want to do. And like one of the a, most yeah. simple, like one of the most simple memes of all time is like when you see the, uh, like that picture of whatever, somebody who's trying to stunt and you can clearly tell they're broke and then they show a picture of Bill Gates or whatever and he's wearing his, his t-shirt, plain yeah. ass shit and he's a billionaire. And it's one of the most simple things, but it's so true. Like, it is. you know, like, well, yeah. why would you try to, like, no, people know, people can look at you and they can tell how much you're worth. Even though you, you're trying to pretend that you're wearing all this shit, like people yeah, know yeah. how much you're. I mean, you know, yeah, you're like when you see a guy with expensive chains and Yeezys on, but he's taking the bus. Yeah, I mean, unless this man got pulled over drunk and he lost his license, and otherwise, this man has his priorities messed up. Because like, dude. unless he really thinks he doesn't need a whip in the city, he'd rather take transit. Which is fine because well, if you can, if you live in, the, I just yo, you manage by all whip. means, but I, mean, I don't see that much. I don't see that. I know all those men are no. Salty. Someone who would be wearing like Yeezys and like expensive chains would probably really appreciate a whip. But let's be real, <laughs> like, and those so. are the same people that are the artists hitting us up, and they can't even pay for a five hundred dollar music video, but they're showing off money on their account. Yeah, you're trapping, right? Yeah. You can't swing me. Or what's even worse when you're buying <laughs> bottles, good bottles in the nightclub. That's yeah. even worse. You can't you can't swing me a higher budget. Shit. I just saw 20 racks on your account. You swing you can't swing me one of them. Yeah. But hey. For your career too. It's not what do for, I know? it's equally as for you as it is for us. And you're not giving it right. to men who are just running away with your money. They're using it to actually produce something that's more than it's worth. You know, that's like, very true. especially that's when true. you're working with people like Lost in Nostalgia, it's like you're yeah, giving yeah. them $1,000 and you're getting back $5,000. I mean, again, but, you know, like people don't think about it that way. I don't want to boast, exactly. like, but like, yes, there's been cases where we have created a $1,000 video with the value of almost yeah. 20K. Yeah. Right. But that, I mean, I guess part of that goes down to, you know, people not distinguishing the quality yeah. between what $1,000 gives you mm-hmm. and what $20,000. And part of the but. problem with that is, again, it's we, the, the standards here in the city when it comes to shooters is really high. Yeah. It's really high. Like, <laughs> yeah, the guys that are really fucking good are really fucking good. Yeah. Here. They're grinding. Yeah. yeah. And they're doing their thing. So it's hey, true. It's part of, it's part of the process, part of everything. Um, but yeah, yo. 
how how are men staying when you have to deal with nonsense like this? Yeah. On a regular basis, whether that be through the school system or us clients or fuckery from the family and the friends, (laughs) your girls ringing down your phone about this and that. How are men staying motivated and inspired out here? Like, how do you guys stay creative? Uh, Looking at... Mm-hmm. He did the pour on the mic. Yeah. Got the rosé on the mic. <laughs> you drinking? Yeah, it's rosé. Um, how do I stay inspired? Hmm. Or what does inspire me? So music is huge, as we've been talking about. That really does inspire me. Yeah. How to stay motivated though? Um, honestly, just knowing that like I have a set future in mind, and I just set goals. Like honestly, I don't know. I just I self motivate a lot. I wouldn't be an entrepreneur if I didn't Mm self-motivate myself but like honestly like just knowing that like this success could could be part of my life like I just grind towards that like honestly it's kind of that simple for me not saying I'm there's days where I'm not motivated oh yeah for sure there's days where yeah I'll, I'll have I'll feel like there's days where I'm literally like fuck I'm making no money like but I understand now that you have to do that. Uh, to yeah. in, in in the arts community, you have to like do a lot of like no money type of work. Because nobody's making money no. until they're on. Really. Even the people who you think are making money. Are yeah, even the people money. that you think are making money, whether they're the they just know or a few the artists, yeah, <laughs> rappers or musicians that you think are making money, they're not. Yeah, man, if like, if those artists that you love aren't writing their songs, they're probably not making a lot exactly. of money. Unless no. they're doing like a hundred k. The reality is, if they're not touring, yeah, if they're exactly. not, yeah, if they're not touring or signed, yeah, the reality is they're probably not making yeah. money because there's no other way. Yeah, like, like. Like if if a club isn't paying them like a good five racks to be there, like it's just not happening. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> exactly, it is. And all these people you think you might envy because they had a song that blew up. I, every time I see somebody who blows up now, I'm like, yo, I hope they can. I hope we can. Last. Uh, yeah, like Lil Nas X. Like I I seen some of his interviews and stuff, and I'm like, he seems like he has the right mentality in terms of. Yeah. He knows that. Uh, I was watching the shop, and and he knows that you know he's probably not going to have a song that's going to be as uh popular as be cuz it was it's the most long running number 1 song <laughs> yeah. of all time like yeah. you Damn. can't just be an artist and be like yeah I'm going to break that again I'm going to do it again kinda, at 17 years old one. no like he had the right people in his ear telling him like oh, you know uh you know not not to bring him down but like yo this was all viral you know yeah, like exactly. so you're not going to and don't try to attain don't try to reach for that again you know and I feel like a mm. um a lot of these, especially because it's mostly rappers who blow up in these viral situations, I feel like you get they, they get these like labels telling them like, hey, you know, we can keep going with this. You're going to keep seeing this level of success with everything you drop, you know? No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Every time I see somebody blow up off of a song now, I'm like, yo, like, I hope, hope you works. have the right people around you. you know, I like, hope it works out. Yeah. yeah. I mean, history is repeats itself. And unfortunately, I feel like your first song you put out becoming a hit that big is not always a good thing. It's never a good thing. Uh, honestly, those artists have the shortest careers. Yeah. <laughs> like, and that's why, low-key, I just prefer this type of grind. Like a slow, thing. steady grind. The slow, steady grind like, is where it's at. Because, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're going to feel, you're going to have days where, yeah, you're not going to be motivated or inspired to do shit because you're just, like, in the dumps. Like, you got bills to pay or you can't even just go out with your friends because, like, the way I think about it is, to do. Yeah, the way I think about it is, like, I would rather be at my worst now when nobody can see me and yeah. like I have no money yep. rather than when I have a bunch of money off of yeah. this one song and everybody can see all my shit and then that's when I hit my my, my low no exactly. like it's I'd rather bad, be getting yeah. allegations yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, all God. of that yeah <laughs> none of that you know oh, what I mean shit. like yeah. I'd rather I'd rather my lowest moment have either been past me or be right now where like you know there's not a a lot of other things going on or other people depending on mm. you or so much pressure because all of that stuff, that's what amplifies all that pressure because imagine like feeling your worst and you have like 50, 100 people employed under you, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just because yeah. you have the money to, for that stuff now. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. This is wild, man. Like for me personally, when it comes to like thinking about what inspires me and motivates me and shit like that, it's like, yeah, I would say music as well. Um, I would say Mm -hmm. I make sure that I'm really connected with the people that are like me, if you will. Right. Like-minded. That's good. Um, I try to find that in a lot of individuals outside of like us. Yeah. 
So if, even at work, for example, I'll try to make sure that, you know, I find a couple people that are like on the same wavelength. Of, even if they're me, not you know? in the same industry. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. They kind of think the same I way. try to, I'm, I'm the type I of guy like, saying. I want to support people even when I'm down. You yeah. know what I mean? So it kind of helps me because like I'll see a friend doing well. They might, they might, you know, create some cool piece or something like that. A lot, I have a lot of painters I work with. So for example, like a painter, um, they, uh, they might make a piece and me seeing the creation of that thing or even being able to have that talk before they made it yeah. is something that kind of like helps me out too. Yeah, that's true. Um, I yeah. really like seeing other people succeed. Yeah, I actually do too. And, and just going through this grind with, start, with a startup company, I when I hear other people starting companies and entrepreneurs, and we work with a few startups on videos and stuff, that shit's inspiring. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I appreciate those people way more because yeah. I've been going through it. Yeah, and and you I understand know. the hurdles that they're going through. And that if they haven't given up yet, that's sick. Yeah, like that's exactly. and I even yeah, that. even going on that too, like, like seeing people painting specifically or seeing people like open a startup or a restaurant or something. I'm like, yo, the sh- compared to like what they're doing, like the shit we're doing is light. Like exactly it's compared to like investing into like a restaurant or like so trying to become a painter as yeah. a full time career exactly. or a writer. Like that's so that's mind blowing to us as as a musician. That's like yo, you guys are fucking crazy. You know exactly. what I mean? Yeah. So so high risk yeah. for failure just it, like just based, on, rel- yeah, based yeah. on statistics Rel- like, yeah, that's relative, why I'm yeah, yeah relative, relative to like risk. how much risk we're putting into what we're doing compared to what they're doing like investing that much money at that amount of time or you know being a being an, yeah. a being a painter or a writer like it seems like it's so much it, it requires so much more confidence in what you're doing specifically for you to succeed whereas i feel like so much of what uh what keeps us going as musicians and filmmakers is the fact that we have these platforms online for yeah. us to be able to disseminate we can, again work. we can always just drop shit yeah you know what i mean yeah, yeah. that's true i think one thing to remember just to stay motivated with like whatever you're doing if it's being an entrepreneur or startup whatever it is um shit just takes time yeah. Like, yeah. there's no and people are so caught up on like blowing up fast or yeah. being insta famous in it's a day being whatever you know what i mean and it does i and and what what sucks is like they people those people that does exist yeah like people do blow up overnight or in a week but just don't like I wouldn't take that as an example yeah like, you can't just be thinking like that like yeah, don't you have, try to force that no no don't a viral moment no again viral is that's the end of the, the day whole you point, don't yeah. choose it yeah that's <laughs> yeah. that's yeah that's kind of part of the definition of viral is the fact that you can't control it right you like, really it's something that can't yeah. yeah i mean there are like hacks like yeah. becoming more yeah. viral whatever there's a bunch of research behind it but besides all that shit at the, end of, at the end of the day anything that's like really any like super successful big goal is gonna take time because if it was easy everyone would be y'all it was easy and everyone was making bare racks at a big company then everybody yeah, would everyone be doing, be doing it. it. Yeah. But it's so hard to do it. So That's why a lot of people want to be doctors yeah. <laughs> and, and do other shit because they're like, you know, I just got to be in school. I got to do this. I'll make some money. Yeah. Because my parents yeah. said I would. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> I'm yeah. not saying it's easy though. Just, you got to be patient with anything. And yo, like, if, yeah. Like, for example, this podcast. We're not expecting this podcast to really get any listeners for at least the first six months, if not longer. Yeah. And that's a reality. Yeah, we were just saying, like, we're not expecting... Like, I'm not expecting to be on my game until, like, uh, yeah. past the hundreds. Yeah. We're probably not even get good at this until, like, a good, a good <laughs> yeah. 50 episodes. Exactly. Maybe we're doing great now. We're you doing okay us. right now. I you will tell say. Us. We're, we've been killing... <laughs> last episode was nasty. Yeah. 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 But, like, yeah, <laughs> like, like, even for example, last episode, that's something that makes me want to do this even more often. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? We'll make good connections with people. We meet, we meet it's pe- actually really people. Good. That was my first... That was my first time uh, meeting him. So, it was just, like... Yeah. It was like, okay, sick. Like, I would say, yeah, from a specific perspective, uh, because we we talk about this a lot too, is like what's going on in Scarborough right now. That's a big motivator for us is the fact that there are these like minded people who are, um, you know, they've gone through the same things and they they're they have the same goals and directions. So it kind of goes back to I don't know which whatever one of you were saying (laughs) about like having that community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and like having these people who think the same way. You're like, oh. I could do this too because people are on the same page as me. Exactly. You have to find you have to find those people or else you're gonna be in your own head all the time, you know? And it's yeah. not and it's not networking that we're talking no. about. It's you actually it's just being, going out. Yeah, no, it's being, being friends. Being yeah. you and being friends <laughs> yeah. with somebody. Yeah. Like that's why the people that we work with are like friends. They're yeah. not like business associates. You exactly. Know I mean? like, like I'm friends with a lot of people. Yeah. And again, like I support people that I just fuck with. So yeah. I'm a man to pull up to your fucking art gallery. Yeah. I'm a man to 
come by and stop by the studio that you just built. Yeah, I'm the yeah. man just to come through. You, you need a video for something? I'll do it for fucking free because I'm just like, you're my friend. You're creative. I understand what you're going through. I could help you out for a little bit because you understand me. And we've had conversations about money, for example. And you understand, and I under, we both understand that, you know what? If either of us takes off, this is going to be something. You know what I mean? We're going to be helping each other, leveraging each other in the yeah. future. People, yeah, I think people sometimes, they're so focused on themselves that they don't realize, like, people, like, name anybody who's at the top, Jay-Z, Diddy, whatever. It's not just them. It's a whole exactly. team behind the really whole team, you know what I mean? Yeah. You can't just blow up on your own. Like, you have to make sure the people around you are the people who are going to carry that same vision with you, you know? Exactly. There might be somebody who's at the top, they're, like, that that figurehead, but it doesn't mean that they could be doing it th- themselves, you know? Exactly, because you never know who you're gonna meet out here, man. Yeah, and again, like you have, you could totally meet somebody that just pops off for a viral moment, and yeah, there you go. Like that's, that's your true. end, for example. That's true. It doesn't mean you gotta stop working. Yeah, it no. means you gotta work even harder. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because yeah. because now all eyes are on you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Now all eyes are on you, and you gotta perform. So you gotta be mm-hmm. there. I feel like part of that is how we work is the fact that. If any time this pops off to be bigger than what it is, we're just trying to be ready for that. Exactly. Even though we're here right now, you might think that we've been at the same place that we've been for whatever, five, six years. And it on, on paper, it might look like that. But the growth that we've had year to year is just so much. It's like, wild. Yeah. Every year, we're like, yo, this might be it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it might this be. might be the yeah. year. You know what I yeah. mean? We're yeah. saying that last year, we said this. We said that. This year and I told man's that like two days ago. Yeah. We genuinely feel that way. Yeah. And it's not because we like we're gonna think we're gonna pop off or anything. It's just that we are more and more ready for that opportunity for it to happen. And we've seen happens. we've seen people sure. who've been given that opportunity and how they've dropped the ball on it. Yeah, exactly. And we've seen and it's kinda like the more you see that, you know, maybe when we started and we saw somebody who blew up you know, when I was 18, I might have been like, fuck, I want to be that person. But now when I see it, I'm like, yo, I'm so much re- more ready than they are. You exactly. Know? I know so much more. Yeah. I know I'm not going to get finessed yeah. as easily. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe men's are coming up with new tactics, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know I'm not going to be finessed out of all my money. You yeah. know what I mean, I know, yeah. I know for a fact, like, I'm not going to have problems with booking, booking people and shit like that because I'm not going to take it. Mm-hmm. Like, I know how to deal with these people more. I feel like you yeah. have to get to that point where you know that whatever you're doing at that moment is is like it's going to it's going to be you, you know, and it's not something yeah. that you can change. Like that's what you have to work towards is the fact that if all of this fell apart, you could still do what you're doing by yourself, exactly. you know? That's true. That's true. Facts. You. And even you know, I'm just thinking about like sometimes man when when I just I'm not motivated, it's like Yeah. I have those days too, like even was just saying, like I have those days. I have those a lot sometimes too. Oh, yeah. Especially since I edit so much. So sometimes I just don't want to. Mm. So like, Fuck, I don't feel like sitting down for 12 hours yeah, editing this video that the artist isn't even going to appreciate. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and like in my like head, that, I know I, like I could whip up a video quick, but I try not to rely on it because that's when I start knowing or start noticing that I'm getting lazy. Mm-hmm. So like I've had moments where like I got footage and I got to get a cut done soon. And I was like... I'll sit on it for a couple of days. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? And it's that's totally fine to do, but I I noticed that I was doing it back to back a couple of times when I shouldn't have been. So it's just making sure that even though you aren't motivated or inspired to do things a lot of the time, like just get something done. Like what I started doing instead was, okay, cool. I don't want to edit this now, but let me, for example, if it's a music video, let me just line up all the tracks, make sure everything's in sync and then I'll come back at come back at it tomorrow. just to break in in the chunks kind of thing let's just do all the the boring hard work just get it out the way so that when i am ready to really dig into this edit everything's ready for me yeah you know what i mean i don't like coloring that much like it's okay (laughs) yeah Yeah. but i just force myself luckily that doesn't take that long (laughs) but that's what you got to do yeah 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 yeah. if you think about a lot of the like day in and day out tasks that you have to do as as creatives, it's none of it is fun. Like none a of lot it is. of yeah. I would but, say not like eighty. I don't even know. Like a lot of it. Like most of the shit that you're doing. Eighty percent of what I do for this company or whatever is, is not fun. Yeah. Most of the shit that we're doing on a regular basis isn't even necessarily fun. The only time I'm having fun is probably like when I'm on set and we're shooting. That's exactly. probably like the true fun. Yeah. Everything else in between is like eh. Paperwork, paperwork, logistics, emails, and even when you're up. on set, 
so much of that time is not spent actually shooting. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You just, so. after your day's done, you sit back, you're like, oh, that was actually kind of. Yeah. Like when we're in the middle of a take and we're rolling and shit, that's fun. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You feel like, fuck, I'm. Because it's fun for me, anyways, because I get to see my creation coming to life. Mm-hmm. Right. And I get, I, like, I worked hard up to this point where we're shooting the artists on set. Mm-hmm. And I think about the hundred hours I just put in to make this happen right exactly. now. Exactly. So that's why it's fun for me. That's part of the process. Doing yeah. all those those little shitty tasks yeah. is always part of the process. Us again, like we've had conversations like this as well. It's like us making this podcast is part of the process of everything that we want to do in mm-hmm. the yeah. future. This this we're not saying that this is it, no. but this leads to other things. This helps us grow. This helps us do something on a weekly basis together. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whether we're just sitting here and talking about nonsense, we're talking about sex and Mia Khalifa, or we're talking <laughs> about our community and yeah. and stuff like that. It's conversations that we should be having as a group and sharing with other people that can lead somewhere yeah. in the future. And we don't know. These are the conversations, like part of, you know, uh, like what, what times you enjoy in your artistic career. This Like this is one of those times where like talking, like, yeah. Well, that's like one of those moments just talking with like you guys or just other artists is yeah. uh, that's when that's where you have to enjoy yourself, you yeah. know? So being able to we're like why would it, you know, why wouldn't we just kind of put this on on tape and, you know, mm-hmm. cuz these conversations are part of the process where we enjoy ourselves and you know, it, it means something towards the growth of our career cuz we're learning things about ourselves as we keep talking, that's right? Very so true. Exactly. yeah. That's very true. Honestly, right now, podcasting is probably my favorite thing right now. Yo, it's, fun, dude. it's probably like my most favorite thing we're doing for the company at the, at this moment. Yeah, I'm not even gonna it's lie. Fun. Like, I'm enjoying this. I, yeah, people who do this full time are blessed. Like, yeah, this man. is actually sick. This is fun to do. Like, if yeah. I could just sit down and talk yeah. all day, like, yeah, like that's lit. It'd be great. You yeah, know? Like, yeah get paid yeah. for that. Though. Yeah, and that's what we want to do. So, yeah, we got to start somewhere. Episode four, and I understand it might take a hundred <laughs> episodes to get there. <laughs> exactly, maybe a thousand. Mm-hmm. But, but it is what it is. We're gonna be doing it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? We're still having fun, you know. Exactly. That's true. So yeah. that's a, that's it. And we're still able to operate with everything else we do. Yeah. You know? You're not giving up music for the podcast. Exactly. We're just doing both, whatever. Yeah. Grind harder. Yeah. Do more cool. shit. That's it. The more shit you do, the more likely something will pop off. Exactly. Right. Uh we had some nice solid talks today, boys. I'm very, very proud. I think we're getting better at this uh podcasting thing. It's true. Um, I think it's pretty hard, you know. Mm-hmm. No, not hard, but like hard as in like we're nasty. This like, is a hard podcast. Yeah. The hardest podcast. 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 <laughs> hardest pod- not doing Don't it. do it. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> not doing it's it. not even because of the accent. It's just. I just can't. You're do white. It. So I just yeah. can't do it. It's not a good look for it's anybody. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, but yeah, man, we the have the most uh, lit podcast. The most lit yeah. podcast. You guys In get it yet? The lit. East part of Scarborough. Mm-hmm. In the. <laughs> Farthest eastern yeah, part of Scarborough. Scarborough. Like, Literally, yeah. Like, fam, we're basically in Pickering. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to know that, you know? <laughs> Yo, these guys are going to find us one day. I swear to God, you know? <laughs> they, it's going to be fucking Eaton's fault, yo. They're not going to find us. I swear to God, I'm going to yell at Eaton's fucking address <laughs> on this just one day, yo. <laughs> Fuck, yo. But anyways, yo, thank you for listening again today to the Lost in Talks podcast. Um, episode four. Yep. As you know, we are the most lit podcast on the most farthest eastern <laughs> end of Scarborough. Yeah. Um, and yeah, was there anything else man want to touch on quick no. or are we good? Uh, no. no. Just thank you for listening and watching if you're yeah. on YouTube. Oh yeah, shout out the YouTube gang. Shout out. Shout out Spotify gang and Apple Mu- Music gang. We're not on the Apple the po- Actually, it's not Apple Music. The Apple Podcast gang. True. Are oh, we on so we're, not, we're not even on Apple. So are we? Wait, wait, wait. Are we? Lo- are we? We're not on Apple. I, I forgot. Spotify. We're an exclusive Spotify. Oh, we're exclusive hey. Spotify. Shout out right Spotify. Right oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Don't we, we don't go on, to any other subscription services. Yeah. It's just Spotify. I mean, should we go to Apple? No, nah, fuck Apple. You actually want to say just on Spotify? I was gonna add. Bro, Apple. We can we can secure a Spotify bag. Yeah. That would be lit. Fuck they Apple. pay for the fucking podcast. Should we just and it starts by us saying fuck Apple, even though I got this fucking MacBook. I, <laughs> or the Mac sh- man, just cover up the logo. <laughs> yeah. Yo, the new iPhone, though. like that's shit. Like oh, hard. yeah, the new iPhone. Do you see that shit? Yeah, 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 like yeah. Hard. It's looking actually kind of hard. The, what's the three cameras for, though, or whatever? It's like different fucking lenses. So you have like a ah, wide, like a, a super yeah. wide, zoomies. Like all a of them. Zoom, yeah, wide, super wide. I can't remember. Telephoto. Exactly. 
Yeah, the telephoto lens. And, uh, that's the kind of looks like a stove on the back of your. <laughs> yeah, yeah, people are saying it's a stove. I wonder where they joke. got the telephoto idea from. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I don't know where they got the. They're gonna add like from ten actual more cameras. cameras, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> you mean not from Android? Android. I'm not sure Apple, but I mean it was. It, no, I mean uh, the Make Me Move video. It's looking like oh, a nice. Oh, <laughs> Apple saw the Make Me Move video. <laughs> They're like, yo, let's add a lens. Oh, let's add three lenses. No, you know what I seen in the the picture at first of the three lenses. I'm like, yo, these motherfuckers did the Nishika, yeah, and I was so cheese. Facts. And I was like, okay, they didn't do that. Okay, but, Easy. but don't give them any adi- ideas. Nah, nah, Apple, nah, nah, don't nah, nah, fucking nah, nah, come nah. for that. Patenting. Don't We're fucking patenting. you don't fuck. <laughs> yeah. yeah, We're patenting that idea. Yeah. We're patenting that idea. That'd be so crazy. Patent idea. <laughs> Patent that idea. But no, nah, yeah. I'm getting that phone by the way soon. I gotta get it. Whatever. you I have a six, man. I'm gonna go from a six to a ten. Oh, what is it? Sorry, eleven. <laughs> Sorry, it's eleven. A six to eleven. Yeah, six. that's a big ass jump. Yo. Yeah, eh? yeah, you're gonna jump on that, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're gonna yeah, jump yeah. on that eleven. Yo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Feel it yo, in your hop on that. Yo, feel yo. it in your back, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yo, this is the Lost Talks oh, podcast, yeah. the most lit podcast on the most eastern side of Scarborough. Thank you for listening. We appreciate 